So, hello and welcome to Salopcast's first alternative commentary for one of these historic Shrewsbury Town games being hosted on the Shrewsbury Town YouTube channel. So, a few weeks ago, uh, the club put out a, a game with nothing but the sound static on it, so we, we thought we could help the club out by attempting to give this some sort of commentary, um, back from 2001 and 2002 as it was. Um, this won't be the usual Stu Dunn standards, uh, he is a legend, but we'll, we'll sort of mix in a bit of commentary with the usual Salopcast musings that you get from our regular podcast. So... With that, I suppose as the players run out, I should introduce my co-commentator this time, Ollie Warner. How are you, mate? Yeah, I'm good, mate. Thank you very much. Yeah, this is fun to do something different. Um, it's going to be interesting um, commenting on this game, um, mm. especially as um, Shrewsbury Town are playing in blue and Plymouth are playing in green, um, <laughs> but we can't really tell, so we'll be trying our best. So yeah, this should be fun. Yeah, it should be. I mean, this is an era of, uh, you know, Kevin Ratcliffe and, and Geno Rogers, and we'll run through the team and stuff as we go through this. But, yeah, this is uh, the first game of the season um, away at Plymouth, and, and there's lots of around that um, in terms of ex-players returning to the club and stuff. But it is an interesting era to go back to, Ollie. I don't know, what, what were you doing in terms of supporting the town at this point in time? So I've just gone to, in 2001 at this point, and I was just getting ready to go to um, Lancaster Uni. Um, so this time I was probably like getting my first phone contract for go to and um, yeah getting ready to go to Lancaster Uni uh, so yeah I was able to follow um, Shrewsbury a bit later on from, from Lancaster when we played Morecambe and stuff when we went down but yeah obviously being at university in Lancaster it was hard to go to games uh, mm. so yeah it'd be interesting you go, did you go to this game? I certainly did I was wasting uh, my you know money that I'd uh... <laughs> got off the government or whatever it was back then I think it's part of my parents to go to university I, I drove all the way out to Plymouth for this game um, so yeah I was here for this match and um, funny enough the club asked us to kind of pick some games they thought the fans would quite quite like to watch back and this I don't know why this game has always stood out to me I think the nature of what happens in this game and the gritty performance and the fact that the club had been showing games from a bit of a more recent era I quite like the idea of going back to sort of the, the early 2000s to see this team that eventually sort of moulded a year later into something that got us relegated out of the Football League so um, yeah it's an interesting era to go back to and, and some players that are fondly remembered some players that are definitely not fondly remembered Ollie. yeah there's quite a few names I remember obviously Red Mile and, and Luke Rogers um, mm. actually I recognise I recognise virtually the whole team um, I did recognise the whole team some of the subs <laughs> not as familiar with um, but it was interesting going back and doing a bit of research on some of the players because even though obviously I recognise the names of, of Pete Wilding and Matt Redmail and, Matt, and Mickey Keith Meek Mickey, Mickey Heathcote yeah. yeah so this is where we would edit out that um, and yeah it's um, funny because um, yeah a lot of players remember and it's been interesting doing a bit of research so we'll share what we can um, as the as the game goes on and we've done a yeah. bit of research into the players um, as the team swaps swap sides yeah they swap sides and also we'll line up for a minute silence now which we'll, we'll still respect I suppose we should do um, and, and we can go over the reasons for that but yeah this was for Daryl Flahaven wasn't it and uh, yeah. that incident that happened Ollie yeah, unfortunately he died in a car crash, mm. uh, and there's a minute's silence um, to remember him. So yeah, it must have been an emotional start for the season for Plymouth um, after what happened, obviously losing someone they would have been very close to. Um, but yeah, it was uh, it was well respected by everyone in the stadium, wasn't it? I remember being again on the day there, it being a very emotional thing, and um, Plymouth fans, you know, you could see quite a few of them in tears on the day, as far as I can remember. But yeah, back back to what's going on. There's old Ron Miller, Lenny the Lion, and Pilgrim Pete. Got to be one of the worst. Uh, got to be one of the worst mascots in the football league, Ollie. Yeah, I don't know. I have to say maybe um, the Bradford one with just a guy in a hat. Um, at least they've actually put some effort into this one. Yeah, Ron was there though. I mean, yeah, God, Ron went everywhere, didn't he? And all the Lion costume still does it to this day. But um, 
here we go. We're about to kick off, Ollie. And I, for one, Ollie, cannot wait for this game to start. I'm, I'm really looking forward to watching it, so here we go. So here we are with kick off. Gemma's going, oh, Rogers, what are you doing, mate? <laughs> oh, God. Awkward. <laughs> Awkward moment. It does seem very often, a bit Ollie. too quick there. <laughs> oh, dear. Yeah, very keen to get the season started, obviously, this year, weren't he they? He was. Um, yeah, off, off really Full quickly. Full of beans. Yeah. But here's, here's where we're going to have to just quickly talk about this footage, Ollie. It's going to be a bit difficult to tell quite <laughs> what's going on at times, isn't it? Yeah, there's a few things we need to try and figure out. One we need to try and... Some of the players are, are, are recognisable. So there's Redmile, clearly yeah. recognisable. And Rogers at five foot. You can clearly see him. Um, but yeah, we need to try and figure out what uh, formation they're playing and a few things. Mm. The guys in high vis are visible at least. That was a great throw from that guy in the in the in the back stand. Eh? It was a really good throw <laughs> and probably better than the ones Beckles has taken this season. But um, interestingly, yes, it, the first thing to probably talk about as this game kind of evolves into a scrappy opening, I think, is the stadium redevelopment. We did just mention it in the intro, but yeah, yeah the whole three stands were knocked down over the like, previous six weeks to this game, Ollie. Um, which was uh, as a part of a redevelopment of the stadium. I think it's 18,000 capacity it got it up to. And yeah, I remember on the day we were all ba basically bunched in the one stand together. So it's quite a, quite an interesting atmosphere. Yeah, and I remember going back uh, under, um, must have been the Graham Turner years, and they were demolishing the stand that we're in now. Yes. Um, so yeah, they've done a lot of work to, to make it. It's a nice stadium now, to be fair. Yeah, it was actually, they, they did so much work on it, it got put forward for the 2006 England World Cup bid, didn't it? Which is obviously four or five years after this game. Um, um, obviously, we didn't win the World Cup, no, did we? But yeah, it was it was a very impressive um, sort of set of redevelopments that were going on. But a very unique atmosphere to play a game in. It must have been quite odd for the players that day. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, obviously, the fans all on one side. It's been quite straight, strange. Yeah. So we're getting into the game. Carl Murray hooking the ball forward uh, to absolutely nobody. But yeah, I, I don't know. I'll probably ask you first of all. Let's run through the team, I suppose, because that would be the sort of thing a commentator would do, Ollie. So in goal, we have Mark Cartwright. Uh, right back, we've got Ian Jenkins. Now, we're not 100% sure what tactic we're playing because there appears to be <laughs> a lot of centre backs playing in this team. But we're pretty sure that Matt Redmond and Mickey Heathcote are playing centre back. Um, yeah. And Greg Rioch at left back. Carl Murray in central midfield with, I think, probably uh, Pete Wilding. And then Jagelka, Atkins as well in midfield. We'll see quite where they end up, but Rogers and Jameson up front. So, yeah, it'll be interesting to see as we watch this game quite where everyone ends up playing, but it does look like Wilding's in midfield. Yeah, I think Pete Wilding's playing left wing. Oh, okay. Which is probably one of the most. We often <laughs> do play, as play, play players out of position. Um, but playing um, yeah, Pete Wilde in left wing is not really an attractive move, that's fair to say. No, there's Matt Redmond bombing forward there as well, kicking it straight out of play. You didn't see that too often. But um, we should just mention, I suppose, the, the reason that was for is there was quite a lot of injuries at this point in time, Ollie. Um, so I was reading back in the programme from the, the first home game, which was obviously after this, and um, Simon Shakespeare was the, uh, the physio at the time, needed a, a, a sort of shaky treatment talk article, and he was talking about the players were injured. But yeah. Ryan Lowe was um, on the comeback from ankle surgery, so he could have played out on left wing. Um, Darren Moss, who just signed from Chester City that summer, uh, was injured as well. Jamie Tolley did his ankle ligaments in pre-season versus Telford, and, and Sam Easton, who definitely would have played left wing, was recovering yeah. from the foot fracture. So it was obviously a weak area, and, and Wilding did a job for us that day. Yeah, no, we definitely, it was definitely a weakened team, but it's worth noting, and we'll go through the players in a bit more detail, but it's quite, it's quite an interesting mix of ages in this team. So you've got quite a few players in their 30s mm. um, and then you've got a couple of players like Carl Murray who was 19 Lou Rogers 19 but a lot of players over 30 um, be interesting if it had a funny thing that that had a bearing on the season um, <laughs> in terms of the age of the squad and it's something that we got used to wasn't it especially as we went into um, the following season we had even had even older players we've signed with players like Ian Rowan yeah, yeah, well, yeah. They didn't transfer. Actually, nice little break here. Yeah, I mean, the age of the, the squad was one of the things I remember people complaining about when we did eventually get relegated two years later. So possibly yeah. we didn't learn the, the lesson. But this season was a slightly better one, wasn't it? We didn't do too bad. We actually yeah. started this season really well. I think we didn't concede in the uh, first like, three away games of the season, which was some sort of record, like a hundred year long record at that point in time. So you know, it, it was interesting how it evolved from the start of the season to the end of the next season. But um, yeah, it, it, it's the way it went, isn't it? Unfortunately, it's uh, a very very interesting era how it went from alright to pretty poorly quite quickly yeah no it was <laughs> so, classic yeah. clearance for Matty Redmar there Pete Wilding on the left wing trying to clear it up to Gemma that no, didn't work no not happening I mean it is impossible to tell who's who in this colour here and, and yeah thanks, thanks <laughs> to the club for such high quality footage but I'm sure when the incidents happen and there are a couple of key incidents in it, but it, yeah it's, it's, um, it's going to be tough I suppose um, 
should just mention the referee, Ollie, Mr. Clive Pennington. Uh, I, I googled him, did a bit of hilarious searching. Um, in 2009, he was part of a, a Neil Warnock saga, Ollie, I don't know if you're aware of this, but yeah, Palace lost 4 1. And he came out after the match and said he's literally not fit enough to referee this game. Obviously, that was eight years down the line. Um, and I thought, oh, well, that might have just been a one off. But as, as I searched more, Mr. Poor old Clive Pennington, um, Joe Kinnear called him a Mickey Mouse referee as well one day. So um, there we go. But I think he worked for BT and he wouldn't give up his job to go full time. So I don't think his fitness was ever amazing. But as we'll find out as this game goes on, I think maybe old Kevin Ratcliffe might have had some stern words for him too. So yeah, who was the shooter Town manager then at this point? Yeah, it was Ratcliffe, wasn't it? He, he was involved in sort of shaping the squad after taking over from... Um, oh God, my memory's gone now. Who was it before Ratcliffe? Fred Davis, I suppose? I guess. I don't know. No, Jake King, wasn't it? Yeah. Jake King. Yeah, um, Jake King. Yeah, so we're, we're sort of in the early Ratcliffe era, aren't we? Um, so yeah, he, he was the manager at the time. And uh, yeah, a, a manager with a very, I don't know, <laughs> not great reputation with Shrewsbury Town fans anymore, obviously. No, no, <laughs> no. We went for an era... Um, we'll, give the man, we'll give the chairman a lot of credit for a lot of things he does um, <laughs> choosing managers um, it was, it's not necessarily his forte no I don't think Roland had been chairman for very long at this point in time to be fair um, obviously we were, we were down on our watch in the Jake King era I'm pretty sure Roland came in during the, the Jake King era maybe just before um, so we're obviously still at Game Meadow aren't we and we're, we're sort of yeah. you know, struggling with those things and interestingly I was reading the programme pre-match in this hall um, yeah, I was reading the programme uh, post-match and it was talking about how we were currently sort of having uh, a break-even figure for gates of 4000 Dolly, and we weren't getting anywhere near that at the game meadow most weeks, so we were definitely in a situation where finances were tight and this team was probably built on a, on a quite a small budget. Yeah, no, it's definitely, uh, and yeah, you can see that in terms of the, the, the squad, We've got quite a few journeymen mm. in this team, and quite a few players that um, never really went on to play um, much more in their career. Good example um, being Carl Murray. Yeah. So Carl Murray in this game um, started his career at Shrewsbury uh, and then went on to play on um, the rest of his career um, at non-league. Uh, so yeah, it was a, it was a, it was a wasn't exactly um, a, in terms of the last game we did the Berry one where you're signing 150k for Grant Holt yeah. um, just shows how far the club has come and from this time well, our record sign at this point was still from 1979 100, 100 grand for John Dugworth so, um, and 100 grand for Mark Blake in the 80s so we, we didn't break that record for about another what, nine years after this so um, yeah it, it's interesting you know, we, weren't, we were definitely a, a totally different club at this point in time weren't we at, at, yeah. in the game Meadow well we finances. definitely were Playing um, Pete Wilding on, on the left wing to play as a bit of a target man, that didn't work, quite work though, did it? The great thing about Pete Wilding was he played pretty much everywhere, didn't he? Like, he there did. were games where he ran in goal, there was games where he played centre midfield, pretty much he all. He played up front as well. Yeah, I think he probably went up front at the end of games as well. He was the, the journeyman, and you know it's nice to kind of get our first Pete Wilding game looking back at these retro these retro games because he was such a stalwart for the club, wasn't he? He was never never the greatest, yeah. obviously Pete the feet, but he, he always put it in for us, didn't he? Yeah, no, he was always a, a player you can rely on. Um, yeah, he was <laughs> uncharacteristic in his running style. But yeah. here we go, his shoes be on the ball, playing a bit of passing move, probably the first bit of passing move of the game. Oh no, here we go. It's very um, it's very low league <laughs> the performance we're seeing at the moment. It's not it's not in a high quality start, that's for sure. Um but yeah, it's uh, you know, it's football, it's lead to what, what are you supposed to do? But yeah, I mean, you know, we've, we've I don't know if there are any chances in this game. We haven't watched it back before and Ollie, but you're kinda of hoping. No we're not, this is live. This is live, live watching it in this, for us, in a sense. We haven't and watched this back. Yeah, and it's been, and it stays in the middle for quite a while. But, um, yeah, I, you know, we'll, we'll have to see how we go. But, yeah, I don't know. It was a very a nice sunny day, I remember, down there. That was another thing I remember about the day. It was a proper, like, um, we talked previously on one of our salad casts about that um, play playoff feeling, Ollie, where you've got, um, you know, that summertime feeling and playoff games always feel really good. But there's always something about that first game of the season, especially if you're away somewhere in the sunshine. Yeah, no, this first game of the season is always exciting, um, especially when it's a nice sunny day. Um, and yeah, it was interesting. I was um, chatting to uh, Andy Tretton, trying to get a bit of insight into the team and what was going on at this point and what it was like for him. Um, and yeah, um, first of all, he said that I was testing his memory, <laughs> which is not fair, because we are going back to 2001. Um, and yeah, we remembered, um, yeah, it was an interesting. You remember the game, he said pre season was really good. Um, he said we had a tour of Cardiff, he thinks. I and mean, then the team actually had quite high expectations going in and they were a really good bunch. Um, he was a little bit gutted because they signed Mithihiko in this week um, and that meant that he wasn't going to start. So that was a bit of a shame for him, um, which wasn't good news for him. But he said he was a really good guy um, and he was really, really lucky that he got to play a lot with him. 
Yeah, it's interesting. Mickey Coat was one of the summer signings, wasn't he? And, and you know, yeah. as, a, as a well, I was at 21 at the time. I don't. I was. I was not watching town when he played for us previously. And um, obviously, he was 35 at this point in time. So he was one of those players I was looking forward to seeing because you spoke to all the sort of older town fans, um, and everyone you know loved him. He'd done such a good job in his first stint that you know people were glad to get him back. Um, however, obviously, we signed him from Plymouth, didn't we, Ollie? Um, and yeah. so he got, I don't know if people could hear it in the intro, but he got booed when they announced him, and then there was a few yeah. claps, and you know it's the sort of thing that happens nowadays when a t- ex-town player comes back and um, we do the similar thing. People will boo, and then everyone sort of realises if they've had a good stint for us that they deserve the credit. So um, yeah, interesting reaction, that's for sure. Yeah. Not good defending there for oh. Shrewsbury. Yeah, not it's good. Really good opportunity to score from Plymouth. Unfortunately, went wide. Um, no, no, no save there for, for Cartwright, who interestingly was called Chewbacca. That was his nickname in the yeah. squad at the time. Um, and you had, um, um, yeah, Greg was, um, Greg was known as Buzz Lightyear. Uh, <laughs> and we had obviously Jags was his nickname, Jack Yoka. That's obviously the original nickname. Um, and then, yeah, um, Andrew, Andrew, Andrew Tretton goes on to say that um, Mark Atkins, who had a Premier League winner's medal, yeah, um, he did. and of course he described the, the front two as dynamic, which I think is fair to say. It's a classic big man, little man combo. Yeah, I always I did like the Rogers Jemson combination, and it got goals. You know, we, we've yeah. had two strikers that got goals consistently in the same team for quite a while, have we? We've obviously had Holt getting 20 in one season, and we've had obviously Faye getting quite a few, and Collins getting quite a few. You never quite had that partnership. I, I can't think of any partnership since then that was really like pr- two proper strikers in a partnership. No, it's a really good point, actually. You can't think of a, a, a combination like like Love, Rogers and Jemson, mm. um, probably helped by the, the Everton game. Uh, sure, yeah. I mean, obviously one with a huge amount of experience you know, in Jemson and one who was a young lad that went on to do really well in his career and, and play at a high level. So it, it was a nice combination at that point in time, wasn't it? Um, yeah. in terms of, in here's terms of, here's so, a question for you, Glenn. Oh, go on. How many clubs did Nigel Jemson play for? Oh, yeah. It was the old joke, isn't it? He said, got more clubs than Nick Faldo. I don't know. Is it like in the 20s? 20. Oh, there you he go. Played for 20 clubs. Um, but Luke Rogers isn't far behind with 17. <laughs> <laughs> it shows you, doesn't it, that... Uh, you know, clubs will pay the money and get someone in for, for, for a goal scorer, won't they? So um, there we go. We, yeah. we've it's got... interesting about um, Jemson while we're here. So he's, he was born in Lancashire and started his career at Preston North End. Um, as he said, he played for 20 clubs. But actually, he played most of his games for Shrewsbury. He played more games yeah. for Shrewsbury than anyone else. He's played, he's played 109 games and he scored 36 goals. And his second and highest um, club and um, played games for was Oxford where he's played 68 games and scored 27 goals and, mm-hmm. and famously obviously played for Rotherham didn't he against us um, in yeah. the cup final yeah. uh, but he only played for them for 15 games um, but scored um, 6 there oh wow fair play yeah he had a good, he had a good record then it, it's interesting because um, like if you think we haven't got relegated that next season he might even have played more games you know he might have fancied another yeah. season at our level he just he, you know, I think he was out of contract and probably didn't mm-hmm. fancy the conference I'm not sure whether he retired at that point I'd have to check but Oh, another big chance for Plymouth as they yeah. head wide. They're definitely on top at the moment in these early exchanges. Yeah, we haven't. Have we had a shot on target yet? No, I don't believe we have. <laughs> no, <laughs> we've had a shot, Ollie. It's like Ricketts ball. <laughs> well, we probably shouldn't say that because we got on the club website. <laughs> but yeah, it's uh, it's not been the most free flowing start from town. But there's, there's, there's uh, Mark Cartwright. Yeah, Ian Dimbavin, um obviously was the number one. He had the number one shirt, and, and Cartwright had the number twenty one. But um, yeah, obviously Ian Dimbavin was injured at that point in time. <sighs> He was such an interesting player. He played a lot of games for Aston Baffin as well, yeah, didn't he? he but did. He had so many mistakes in him. Wasn't he from Liverpool? In, in, in he Liverpool? was, yeah. Yeah, yeah he, he got involved in all sorts of incidents in Liverpool that we <laughs> probably shouldn't talk about. But yeah, he, he, he was always a keeper that you kind of thought, oh, he'll make a good save every now and again, but also... He was mate to Gerrard, didn't he? That was it. He was, yeah. Yeah, there was, yeah he was mate to Gerrard. So, um, yeah, so there we go. But it's definitely... From town. Pete Wilder, oh, risky. another loop forward. Yeah, we just can't keep the ball at this point, can we? We just keep lumping it forward no. and kind of keep coming on to us. And they're definitely, dem- 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 yeah, definitely dominating possession. And we Pete should probably talk about Plymouth quickly, Ollie, because one of the reasons why we're probably not on top here is that Plymouth were sort of um, one of the bookies' favourites to go up. So Paul Sturrock had gone in as manager last season and he kind of you know, ripped, ripped everything up and started to build his team last season. And, this is the Paul Sturrock um, era. Oh, interesting. It is. And so that. they went on to win the league, um, obviously, with, with this team under Sturrock. And then they went on to win the next division and, and he got them up to the championship. So this is almost the start of that sort of meteoric rise that they had. And, and they had some really good players. We haven't even ran through their team, but I'll do that quickly, Ollie, while, this is, while the ball's back in the construction stand. Um, yeah, so they had Romain Lario in goal, John uh, Bez Weatherick, uh, Graham Coughlin, who 
obviously uh, came on to play for us later down the line. Paul Wooten was the captain, and Brian McGlinchey were the sort of defenders. They had David Frio, I remember, was always pretty decent against us in midfield. And then Steve Adams, Martin Phillips was the winger, um, and then Kevin Willis as the midfielder, and then Mickey Evans and Ian Stonebridge, a couple of wily old characters up front. So it was, it was clearly was a team that was shot? building. <laughs> what? Was, was that, that a shot? shot? Yeah. <laughs> it was, unfortunately, yes. Uh, it was a Plymouth shot, though. So I think they've had three shots to our zero so far, Ali, but um, I'm, sure, I'm sure we'll get there. So, yeah, they, they had quite a lot of um, experienced players, Wiley players. That, that Paul Wooten, the captain, stayed with them all the way to the Championship, um, lifted two league titles. So he had a great time at Plymouth. Yeah, and the manager had a really good spell at the club, didn't he? It's always funny, interesting Fantastic. when you see a manager that, that does that, a bit like Eddie Howe kind of took Bournemouth up through the league. It's always interesting when you have those kind of stories. It, it always reminds me as well that it's like that, almost like that... Tr- where football manager comes true, where it does actually happen, where you know you see, you see people. I saw someone um, on Twitter yesterday um, was managing Forest Green and was taking them to the Premier League, and he put a suit on for his playoff final. <laughs> um, like he was playing, uh, I can't remember who he was playing. I think it was Everton had got relegated on this football manager game, but uh, yeah, it's quite funny. Interesting, actually, a comment on uh, from um, Andy Tretton about um, Plymouth, and um, that oh, we yeah. actually beat them three one later on in the season. Oh, right. um, he said Greg got sent off and then we beat them um, 3-1 so obviously um, Plymouth while they had a great season um, didn't enjoy playing against us No and it is a man down injured here so there's a bit of a pause in play it, you know we're looking at 15 minutes in now if this was the Twitter era Ollie, you'd probably be looking to put your first tweet out about the game What would, you, how would you describe this opening period by Shrewsbury Town? Uh, it's been a little bit woeful <laughs> um, but I guess yeah we haven't got a full strength team out which is a no. bit of a caveat to kind of defend but yeah Plymouth have definitely been on top um, and if we were doing the agenda for the podcast I don't think we would have any comments to mention, mention so far <laughs> apart from maybe this head injury yeah that's why it's interesting doing this kind of live back watching it for the first time but uh, yeah, here we go there's Ian Jenkins just walking off uh, you know, remember him he was quite a robust uh, right back he was he, he liked to fly and challenge he was quite a strong well built bloke and yeah again I'm not sure he didn't play too many games for us in the end but um, I always quite liked Ian Jenkins yeah interesting character so in this game he was 29 and he started his career at Everton, played five games for Everton before he went on to Chester. Yeah. And um, played for Dundee, then he played for Shrewsbury. Uh, he's actually an international, so he has mm-hmm. six he caps um, for Northern Ireland. But really interesting that um, he's currently, so he's a coach at Cowden Beacon in St Mirren, obviously connection to Brian Caldwell there. Um, he's actually an elite performance coach for the Scottish FA, so wow. he still works in football. Yeah, he had a good career, and as I say, he, he was always a reasonably decent player for us. Obviously, I don't think he played the relegation season that much, I think he probably left, I can't quite remember now, but he's trying to pitch all this together. But this has been a, a lengthy stoppage, Ollie. Um, yeah. This goes back and maybe we're going to have a shot on goal, then. Are we going to? Let's see what happens. I, I don't know, to be honest with you. It's interesting that we've got a free kick. Out. Somehow that guy's got a head injury, but <laughs> we've got a free kick, so uh, I'm not sure about No going off and coming back on, Ollie, in this era, obviously. No. Um, so he's probably had a couple of stitches on this. You know, probably just had a bandage by the look of it. No shot on target though. Hoof it into no Redmond. No shot on target, no. Hoof it into Redmond, hope that, hope that works, um, but it didn't. Oh no, it wasn't Redmond, it was uh, Wilder, I think. But yeah, uh, ooh, nice touch by Jags almost in. Not too close. Not too but yes, as I say, hopefully, I think, you know, this first 15 minutes of the season, Town tried to ride it out. I'm hoping we kind of get into this a bit more now as, as things develop. But I know what happened in this game, and I know that the incident happens around 30 minutes, so I, I, maybe this was the best bit of the game, Ollie. Yeah, not a lot. <laughs> On, on too much so far. Oh dear, oh dear. I say I mean, they're, um, they're, they're steward stroke builders. Of Poland, have had more to do than their goalkeeper so far. I wonder if they got double pay that day because they are acting as builders stroke stewards, aren't they, with their hard hats <laughs> on? So maybe at half time they can do a bit of scree or uh, you know put, put some seats in or something. And, but yeah, it's interesting. I was, I was reading about the, the ground event. I say it took it literally took six weeks to smash the whole stadium down. Three stands, and they were pretty big, beefy stands. You know, they've obviously still got a lot of work to do looking at it but um, it's nice when the camera pans to the right on it because it gives you a really nice view of uh, Plymouth and the harbour area it looks really pretty to be fair cool yeah there was a, there was a funny moment and I think we might have passed it actually where the um, Plymouth fans were chanting uh, that Exeter City is a um, bleak hole and which is quite <laughs> ironic considering given, given the state of their stadium yeah very true very true um, yeah so yeah I don't know here's, here's old Mark Cartwright again trying to, trying to kick it out but it's, it's interesting. I, I was thinking about how much it cost me to get into this game, and I went back and looked at the programmes again. It was it was £14 to go and watch this game, Ollie. Absolute bargain back in 2001, I suppose. So, um, yeah, football's definitely moved on a little bit since then with inflation and, and with, it, it sort of increased prices. To watch a game at this level now is probably 20-odd quid, I would imagine. So, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's moved on, isn't it? Yeah, it sure has. <laughs> 
Well, the problem with money was this was the ITV digital era as well, Ollie. So, yeah. um, you know, I think that I think the riches were, were waved in front of the football league at this point in time, weren't they? And obviously, we're at the start of the very first season of ITV digital, and God, what a disaster that turned out to be. Yeah, it was. Um, yeah, it was, yeah. It, it's going to be a yeah, small fight to me. What's going to happen at the moment? Mm, yeah, true. It's going to be interesting. Yeah, it is. It is not good. This whole football shutdown, is it? And. Um, I, I don't know. Yeah, Liverpool furlough and all their staff off while we're uh, still paying all ours because we're a proper club. It's, uh, it's an interesting comparison after what happened earlier this season. But that's not 2001, Ollie. We shall return to 2020. Here we go. Luke Rogers showing his pace. Oh, bit of strength there. He holds it up well. Are we going to get a shot? Maybe. Oh, does it? Oh, good bit of play from Luke Rogers here. A really class. good dribble. And oh, unfortunately, no one's there. But yeah, it was a really good bit of play from Luke Rogers and just showed what. What he pays so the, the younger listeners who never saw Luke Rogers play for us, especially at this point, he was absolutely lightning, wasn't he? Man? He was such a good goal scorer this season and, and even the season after. In fact, every season was with us, he got goals in in the conference he bagged and he was electric. It was almost like I remember at that point in time, this was 2001, but you know, you, it was almost like our sort of Michael Owen coming through, wasn't it? He came through our youth system, he was clearly levels above you know what we were playing at times. Um, and obviously it clicked them with Jemson with that bit of uh, sort of knowledge and stuff we haven't really seen them as a partnership in this yet but he, he like in every season like in every year like now pace you know, look at Faye pace threatened any defender especially elder, you know, older defenders and Luke had it in absolute buckets and buckets and he was also really tenacious player he, he would always you know really fly into things he got a lot of red cards and sort of player that you could just easily love yeah no interesting this season um, he, he scored 22 goals in 44, yeah. 40, uh, 41 amazing. games, which is amazing. Yeah, well, since like Grant Holt, so I think in terms of our great strikers in the last of this century, you've had to put Luke Rogers up there with James Collins um, and Grant Holt. Oh, Rogers, yeah, definitely one of the best strikers we've had in the in the in the what in this millennium sort of thing since the yeah. 2000s, and um, his goal scoring record speaks for itself. And uh, yeah, it's interesting. He's not someone that often comes back to the club to do things. You, you know, you think he's pretty much a, a bit of a hero for what he did. Obviously, he came back, didn't he? Later, later yeah, on in his he career, did. And had a little stint, which wasn't quite that brilliant, but obviously showed his love for the club. No, he came back kind of twice, didn't he? Because he came back on loan, yeah. and then we signed in the following season. But when he came back here, and he played 15 games, all. Oh, I thought it was going to be a good shot, but it was quite tame. Good, easy <laughs> save for a goalkeeper. Very easy, straight into Dunbar in the arms. It's Pete Wilding, the, the dynamic left winger. And he Step over. just kicks it long again. Oh, he doesn't <laughs> pass, actually. A no look pass from the central fielder. Uh, that wasn't very good, was it? <laughs> Jack's trying to play it onto Rogers too quickly. But yeah, it was, I saw a step over there. Maybe, you know, obviously anyone that listens to our podcast will know I love a step over from Jermaine Grandison. So that's obviously why I like Pete Wilding. But look at him there. He's, he's charging across from left wing to get involved in the central midfield. And, you know, he, he did. You need to just get around, didn't he? He was just such a. I said we said it once as a utility player, but even in games he'd move out of position. Oh, there's a good chance there. Yeah, they're absolutely dominating players, <laughs> aren't they? And um, Shrewsbury not really having a look in. No, not really. Has Nigel Jemson actually touched the ball yet? <laughs> I don't know. I was hoping to talk about him a bit, but he doesn't seem integral to this game so far. Um, no. Sort of balling the ball into the box every now and again, isn't it? A good bit of play from... Yeah, Plymouth are t- clearly a, a quite a good side, aren't they? Their technique, they're trying to find each other. Two nice bits of play at the moment. Yeah, Overlapping full-backs. Yeah, he's getting forward well. Uh, good block from... I think that's Mickey Heathcote with the block. Yeah, Heathcote's playing quite well in this game. I will say that yeah. from the starting point here. And he's only been there a week, so yeah. fair play to him. Yeah, yeah, he's been back and obviously against his old club. I suppose maybe that helped a little bit that he yeah, kind of knew the players and to... what foot they needed to be put onto and stuff like that. It's always good so, when a player. So did we take a Plymouth reject then? Uh, at 35, I don't know. Maybe he just fancied a, a last little season at a club that he probably had a bit of time for. Um, and, and maybe they just would I say Plymouth were moving on and trying to take a team further forward, and maybe a, a 30. A 35-year-old Mickey Heathcote probably wasn't, wasn't, the, wasn't the one at that point in time, but I don't know, we'd we'll have to have a look. But um, we, don't, yeah, we don't seem to be rushing <laughs> in this game at all, even from God. Maybe because it's warm, but... <laughs> oh dear, do you think we just thought we'd get a draw here and, and go away with it? But yeah, I don't know. It's quite interesting, we've seen Jags a few times on the ball, um, Steve Jagelka. Uh, probably worth my Steve Jagelka story now, Ollie. I once on, uh, went out for it. You've been, you been, you been <laughs> excited, oh, Luke Rogers offside, too quick there, Chief. Yeah, close. Yeah, I never uh, got this out of the podcast because we've never talked about Steve Jagelka before. But I once went out for a night out with him and his wife, and uh, just you, only... just you and him, to, him and his wife, a three. I know, and, me, and my wife. They work him and his, okay. um, him and his, well, his, I think it might be ex-wife. So I have to be careful. Here. But yeah, they they work together, and um, 
he was a nice bloke, we had a really nice chat and had a bit of talk about football, but he only wanted to talk about motocross. It seemed like he didn't really want to talk about football that much. And for, for a night out with me, he was a bit screwed, really, because I only really talked about football. But there we go. Now we're not a night. fan of motocross, thank you. <laughs> I wasn't a big fan of motocross. But, uh, you know, my, my evidence of an evening uh, out with him, lovely bloke. So there we go. Um, but as I say, he's trying so to. He finally got that story out. Exactly. Yeah, I've got so many Here's more a question stories. for you, Glenn. Here's a <laughs> random question. Of any Shrewsby Town player. Um, you could go out for a few beers with who would it be? I, well, I don't know. I've not met. I don't know about you. I've not really met many town players. And, and no, but that's before. the whole point of the question. Yeah. So oh, who I would don't you know. I, who would it be? Probably Gemmo. He'd have some good stories, wouldn't he? If you're looking at this team here, I think he, he'd probably like to drink as well. Um, so he might have been a good one. I could tell you, I wouldn't go out with Ryan Essen, the goalkeeper. Because I did go out with him once, and he tried to crack onto my then my then fiance. It was a very awkward time, Ollie. So, not Ryan Essen. <laughs> Do you know who mine would be? Gary <laughs> Peters. Gary Peters. Yeah. yeah. I bet he'd have some great cool. stories. That was a good challenge. Yeah. Classic, Happy. classic low league fullback and winger going clashing together. Again, foul. So, telling to calm game, down. He's trying to yeah, elder head there, trying to tell everyone to calm down. Mm. So we haven't had much of the ball so far. Rogers on the ball. Oh, oh my god <laughs> everything he, apart from that one dribble he's done he's either been offside or fouls or I think that was a handball I think it bounced up in my hand didn't it yeah it could have been impossible to tell in this footage but yeah it's um, it's 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 an interesting watch practice and I'm sure I'm sure people will be enjoying enjoying this start start starting football Ollie why did we pick this game again because <laughs> there's a dramatic moment that's there is. that way there is. I, I genuinely do remember this game quite fondly and I think this is one of the things about watching games back like this and, and everyone that's watching it will probably feel the same oh I can't worry burst through I like it. Um, is that you know any game you go away and you get a good result having been up against the odds sort of thing always feels like a really good three points doesn't it yeah. you know, on, on the start of the season as well opening day this result ended up feeling really good to me but um, it was a good cool example this season isn't it with Blackpool away yeah true. we didn't have a shot really and then we no. won one no I think it was one no uh, yeah, one one nil. And in memories, that's just a great away day now. Even though we <laughs> just played parent over football all day. Any football at the moment seems like a good memory, and I'm sure you know the reason we're doing this now is we're oh. bereft without football, aren't we, Ollie? And any any chance to do a bit of talking about football or covering some stuff for the club or doing a podcast, it's just you know nice to look back. But how much how much you miss in football, Ollie? Yeah, it's, it's a big thing. It's not just um, it's not just the football. It's also just like they're catching up with your mates, isn't it? Yeah, um, yeah. Catching up with mates, just seeing different faces, um, and yeah, it's just a shame of kind of missing, missing doing something and just going out as well. Mm. Um, but yeah, certainly missing the football, um, and yeah, watching games back and stuff is fun. Um, but it's not as fun as watching them live games and, and going to them. I imagine you're missing it. I imagine your kids are missing it too. Oh, good opportunity yeah. for Pimmel. Scrappy, scrappy games for Yeah. yeah. Right and then, cart right in the end there, but yeah, it, 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 you know, the whole the whole family misses it. And you know, we've talked about how much of a generational thing it is for Shrewsbury Town and Shrewsbury Town fans. You know, that, that whole family vibe on a Sunday. We can't, well, I can't even see my parents anymore because they're all self isolating. But um, yeah, it, it's just so funny that it kind of takes away a, a, a lot of what you've got for a football family. So yeah, I don't know. It's it's an interesting interesting period. But watching these games back and kind of enjoying uh, you know some of the things that we some of the moments we've experienced, the highs and the lows. Um, is an enjoyable thing to do and, and um, yeah, I think the, the, the few games I've seen that she's been putting out on Twitter like this and yeah, have been really good and, and I know Stu Dunn's been doing interviews with players after the game as well which has been great I saw the one with Jack Grimm yesterday and Andy Mangan um, so fair play to the club we're obviously helping them out with this and we'll see We'll see whether this is a car crash or is quite good um, whether we get invited to it again but we've got to give the club some credit at the moment Ollie for what they're doing um, during this football shutdown and trying to keep people a little bit entertained yeah, I know, it's been fun. It's been nice just kind of talking to the club as well, hasn't it? Trying to yeah. arrange these games. So we've done the Marine game so far. Um, the um, Berry one will be out in an hour as we record this. Mm-hmm. We're recording this on a Sunday. Um, so yeah, no, it's been good. And yeah, the club doing whatever they can to um, get videos out and seeing Dave Edwards commenting on kids building stadiums at Lego. So yeah, a lot of fun ideas to keep people entertained. Yeah, the community team are doing fantastic work as well, aren't they? So yeah, so this is just a, a part of that. Um, you know, approaching half an hour here, Ollie. We, we still haven't had a shot, not even no. a shot on target. No, it's a bit similar to this season. But here we it go. is. Some good defending, but yeah, Plymouth quite not just... I guess it's it's, very, it's a bit first game season, isn't it? There's mm. not a lot of passing. Disjointed. Um, it's quite reactionary football. 
Yeah, it's, it's interesting. I was you say good good defending. I think we've got uh, scrapped away a few things, but I'm more I'm watching this, the more I'm noticing how many big headers that Matt Redmond doesn't win, considering how massively tall he was. He's he's been beaten three or four times now by I think it might be Stonebridge that's up front, the number nine. He's he's given him a bit of a torrid time with the headers, which is kind Jemson of Jemson nearly the touched the ball then. Oh yeah, quite over his head. He's been quiet, hasn't he, Gemma? Really quiet. He hasn't given it anything to play with before. <laughs> not really, no. Oh dear, oh dear. It's not, it's not been the best. He's played but... with a good head. Oh, was that Redmill won the header? There we go. And he, was a f- he fouled. Yeah, he fouled. <laughs> <laughs> he only won it because he fouled someone. <laughs> That's classic Matt Redmar for you there. He, you know, we, we are talking about. It. He, he was dreadful, basically, wasn't he? Especially in the relegation season. And he, but he was never all that convincing during this season, Ollie. And, and he does again another player when you look in here. Who, when people talk about worst players or worst this or worst centre backs we've had, Matt Redmar's name is always mentioned. You don't like him, do you? Ben? So well, we signed him this summer not from Notts County, and he ended up playing 144 games. Where he played, he played 144 games in Notts County before he came to us. Okay. Ooh, free kick this wide there, Ollie. Another chance. They must have had maybe seven, eight shots on target now. Um, no, it's not just me that didn't like Matt Redmall. It's not like some sort of personal vendetta like normal Ollie. Sounds I think it's, like it. <laughs> it's like a general general view, really. I think there was a... a, a, a well, I think anyone that played in the team that really rated from the conference has, has got a bad, a true. bad rep. True. I, I think for me, I just remember that era of just signing players like Ian Rowan who just crap and old and he was a bit of a boys club. Mm, but, yeah, I think, you know, any, any player that kind of was in a relegation team ever will probably realise that they've, they've not got the great, greatest standing with, them, with fans. In fact, the ones that, from that relegation team, the ones that kind of did get a decent reputation, the ones that stayed and got us back up, didn't they? Do you yeah. know what I mean? The ones that kind of kept, kept at it, really. So, um, yeah, obviously Rogers was one of those, wasn't he? Ryan Lowe, I suppose, to a certain extent as well. Um, Jamie Tolley so, coming through. So, yeah. they're the ones that kind of got away with the relegation, but they were only young, most of those ones, aren't they? Yeah, they were. Yeah. So, if you had to guess the percentage, Glenn, what do you reckon? It's like... 65% could have <laughs> yeah we've, we've not passed it much have we which is what makes up percentage stats so Someone's yeah warming up on the side po- possibly uh, possibly um, yeah 65% might be about right really um, but yeah 2001 Ollie it's, it does seem like a long time ago this was just before I suppose this was August wasn't it so this is just before 9-11 happened god that's a bit dark yeah. for us <laughs> it's a bit yeah, dark let's, for go there, Glenn. Let's, not, <laughs> let's go let's go a bit lighter so who was number one at this point so it was Christine Aguilera with what a girl wants yeah, oh, really? Go. <laughs> well, it was probably more historic than Christian Aguilera's song, but yeah, I, I suppose it's um, it's an interesting reflection. Yeah, actually, making me think about it now, I wasn't actually at university at this point in time. I was um, doing my work placement. Dog? No, I was doing work placement in my university. I did a four-year course with work placement, and they shot, so, Surrey County Council paid me eighteen grand to go and work for them for a year, which was just starting now. So that's why I went to every game bar one this season. I, I only missed one game. I even I think I've told you the story about going to Carlisle away this season. On, and it getting cancelled and having to drive away from London the second time a week later so um, that was a nasty challenge oh, hello. yeah this is what this is what happens this is really, the trouble really really, really really bad challenge there <laughs> Carl Murray's in trouble so reading back through the programme that challenge uh, the football club's reaction to it was it was a very 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 harsh red card this which he's about to get um, but it looked nasty on the day didn't it yeah I'd like to it did. It was a horrible challenge. Yeah, straight red as well. He's checking his number and his name. He's booking him. Is he going to book him or is he going to give him a red? Mm, we know. Gemma knows what's coming. Not here. everyone knows, Glenn. Some people <laughs> weren't born yet. <laughs> oh, true enough. True enough. I suppose. Yeah, we, we should take it. Not from everyone's that your age. Yeah. Okay, I've given the game away, Ollie. Sorry. Yellow card. Oh, okay. Oh, maybe I got that wrong then. Yeah, it's not the first time, Glenn. Ah, there we go. I remember it being a straight red. I got that wrong. He must make another challenge. Oh, look it? at that football. That is a classic, classic mite of football. And someone's got a dollar. <laughs> this guy's being battered. He's the guy. He's got. He's the guy. Got, he's the guy that got elbowed. It's Frio, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So he's got Vaseline on his head, and now we just tried to break his leg. Do you see how young Graham Coughlin looked then? He looks yeah. so young. Oh, he was. Good. He wasn't born that age. Though. <laughs> Oh, we talked about Graham Coughlin in the last podcast we did, didn't yeah. we? When we covered the Berry game and the, um, awesome. the and he was so good for us. So I got, I got a lot of time for Graham Coughlin. See, I don't I don't hate everybody. I'm not, not like yeah, Matt Redmond, but I had a load of time for Graham Coughlin. But um, yeah, okay, my memory's deserted me there. Having watched this back, I thought he got straight red card in this game, so I was completely wrong. But we'll we'll see what happens as this game evolves. Um, cause I know let's see if happens. let's see if we can have a shot or if Gemma can pass the ball in this half. Very strappy. Oh, Wilding's in. Oh. Sometimes it's hard to know who's who. 
Yeah, oh, it'd be nice again. To, yeah. Nice for us to have a shot before we you know, went out 10 men because I don't imagine we had many afterwards. Um, but yeah. Booze okay. again. Yeah. Booze ring out from the home fans. I wonder if that's with the ref then after what just happened if they're not sending them off. I don't know. Weird. Oh, God, right. Let's go. Back into the building stand. Let's get, get out. It's quite a, a pitch looks alright, doesn't it, for a window? Yeah, it's it's obviously had a lot of work over, over the summer. But, um, yeah, I know this is the kind of crunch part of the game, really, but I don't know, town aren't really deep in this, are they? Do you know what I mean? The midfielders yeah. are on halfway line. They're, we're just getting outplayed. It's not like we're sitting back and being battered. They're, they're trying to get out. There's a lot of direct football, and there's mm. not a lot of passing. You saw it's very classic 4 4 2 here, isn't it? Just get it wide to the windows. Oh, there we go, there's a gap. Oh, what a save. Shouldn't, yeah. let a, shouldn't let a winger cut in with that much space. And no. A good shot and a good save from Cartwright there. Yeah. yeah, Jenkins did well back post, didn't need to clear it away at the second time of asking. But yeah, decent save there by Cartwright. And that's probably their best chance so far, I think, in terms of yeah, what's so. going on. Biggest fish. Biggest quiz, um, cut opportunity in the game so far, a corner for Plymouth. Mm. It's interesting because... Is that it, a camera or is that guy doing some work? In the <laughs> Looks like a tripod. <laughs> I think he's doing some surveying. <laughs> <laughs> There's a guy at the back. See him, Glenn. He's sneaking oh, yeah. in. Someone he's, sneaked in. But he's he got a pressing this... dress on and pressing jacket on. It's not going to be very... Uh, why is he standing up there? It's, it's not weird. the greatest camera angle, is it? No, there's yeah. the ITV digital signs, Ollie. I can see him now. Yeah. Boom, why you be digital? Oh, where are we going? Oh, come on, yeah. he's, he's drunk. There we go. This is the thing I was going to say about this is that this was recorded by the town camera man, so this isn't like the, the sky coverage. Oh, didn't have sky then. It's not even ITV digital coverage, it's it's the sort of um, one they would have showed to the players, I guess. So, um, yeah, occasionally it'll just sort of look at the town players. <laughs> Good clearance, Rogers picks it up. Foul ref. Oh, there we go. Went down easy, but he knew what he was doing. Yeah, in the back. Rogers. Is Rogers in it, I think? Just yeah, it was yeah, Rogers, yeah. 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 That's all good. Um, I suppose we're at the area where, looking behind Rogers there, where it's the end of sort of um, the barriers at football stadiums, isn't it? With these, I mean, when they were building new stadiums, yeah. it was the end of end of the sort of crush barriers, wasn't it? So um, obviously they went all seater now, but yeah, it's sort of a relic of a, of a football era gone gone away now, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> that, that interested. <laughs> no idea. You just want a shot, don't you, Ollie? You're desperate for it now. Yeah, desperate for a bit of shot or something. I don't know why we're playing um, goal kicks to Rogers there, but um, a bit of an odd, odd tactic. I guess we're just trying to keep away from Coughlin, maybe. Or get him in behind and pace, just rely yeah. on the mistake from the centre back. So um, yeah, it looked to be like what he was going to do. But yeah, I'd, yeah, I remember going down here with a couple of my mates. And we were all sort of watching it, opening day, ready for, ready for the action. Um, and there's still people I sit by now, which is quite interesting. So yeah, that's. It's a long time in football, isn't it? What is this? Is this 19 years ago? Yeah, 19 years ago, Ollie. Bloody hell. It's that's what I mean. Be like, that's what I'm saying. There'd be quite a few kids watching this who weren't born when this was, when this was done. True enough, yeah. Another long ball by Shrewsbury. And, yeah, it just felt it's just when nothing is sticking up front. And there's another foul. God, this... That's the one. I think that go. might be the one. It was Roger. It was uh, Carl Murray again. Late again. Didn't quite see the action there, did we? It looked like he caught him, but was it late or was he? Did he get the ball? You can't tell on this highlights. But from, I say, I was going to what they said before. To have a word of him. Yeah. Nigel yeah. Jemson's trying to plead his ignorance, he plead his innocence. He knows he's getting sent off. <laughs> he's the Gemo slaps his thigh. <laughs> so that was a straight red. Was no, that, that was actually, second yellow. And no, a red. But, no, but did he get? I only saw one card come out there. No, he, he did two. I was just saw okay. he did, definitely did two. Yeah. It, Oh, poor Carl Murray. He's already running off thinking, man, I'm going to have to play centre back for this lot next season. <laughs> um, but, yeah, not an ideal moment getting away yeah. from the Plymouth fans. Is that Ratcliffe there taking him off? There he is. No, no, no that was Dave Cook. That was Dave Cook, that um, He's not the same guy that kept getting clogged all the time. Yeah, it <laughs> is. It is. It's a third time. <laughs> it's a third time we've had him. So oh, he's, got, he's got. Look at him. He's trying to bring. He's like he's been in a boxing match. He's in bits, isn't he? Yeah. He's <laughs> in absolute bits. Oh dear, poor bloke. Um, he's going, what are they doing to me, ref? The ref is going, don't worry, lad, you're still all right. I'm sending him off. Oh my god. The, the funny thing is that, um, yeah, like reading the program about that decision, so there's Ratcliffe has a sort of word about it, and he, he basically thinks the second yellow card was, was well, the sending off was, was harsh, so I'm assuming it means the second yellow card, so we couldn't see enough of it on there, and even if you replayed it back, you wouldn't be able to see it. but Apparently it was a less of a bad challenge than it probably looked on that replay then. Um, so, yeah, maybe maybe it was harsh, but who knows. It was not an ideal start to the season, though, was it? Then one nil down away at a team that were already battering you. 
and a team that, yeah, as you said already, were favourites. Yes. So this is this. You can see the players are keen to get get back this on there. You saw Shooter Town players um, still playing as Coughlin again, still playing. Where's Rogers going? Let's try and figure out what formation. We were definitely playing four four two before. Let's try and figure out where we're going now. Is, is Rogers playing right wing now? He's gone deeper, hasn't he? Gemma's yeah. up on his own. Uh, yeah, Rogers is playing right wing. Yeah, but so he's he moved that. into the middle then. Well, yeah. Wilding's moved into the middle. Oh, <laughs> he went for again. Is that the same player again? No. Rogers that's... went for someone then, didn't he? I'm sure. He... <laughs> off off, off the channel again. A word. <laughs> I thought Rogers went in there, didn't he? Yeah, you pushed him. That's that, that Bez Weatherwick. I don't really remember him. Oh, Rogers top feisty now, isn't it? Yeah. Look how big Matt Redmond is. He's absolutely huge. Like, fat He's huge. like a giant. He's the kind of guy you'd want in a shield wall, isn't he? Next to him. <laughs> You want to stand like next to him in a shield wall. Yeah, he looks like a Spartan warrior of some kind, doesn't he? <laughs> he's not a healthy looking man anyway. And, and his bald head, he always made him look like I wouldn't say tall. Spartan, maybe, no. maybe Anglo Saxon. Yeah. <laughs> Spartans had a healthy Mediterranean diet, yeah. didn't they? That's so a bit yeah. of a harsh yellow, though. Do you think that's the referee trying to just give a few cards out? Even up. Kind of please, yeah. Mm. I don't like it when refs do that. Just play the game. No, I free kick for I don't understand how that was a free kick, maybe I was wrong. But I thought Rogers went in. This, this camera's in interesting of position, Ollie. It's a lot of, lot of bald heads in front of it. <laughs> it's um, right in the mix, by the look of it. There's over going on there. Oh dear. I don't think our, you know, would Lewis Cox have been alright if he was in the press right in the middle of all these fans like this? I think he might have been, might have been worried about uh, what was going on. But um, yeah, it, it's uh, it's interesting because I remember on the day, every, everyone fire. was. Yeah, another fire. Everyone was packed in that stand. It was absolutely Oh, crammed. there we go. Someone's giving the finger. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm about one second behind you. One or two seconds behind you, Ollie. So you can lead the commentary of the things that's actually happening because I think I'm a little bit behind. But um, probably just I've got a slow computer. Um, but yeah, I, and I remember that there was a thing in the programme when I was flicking through it. I've got my programme from the day and there's a little printout that says due to the redevelopment of Home Park after the game, um, we'll be keeping you behind. And so, because they had to let all the Plymouth fans out of the same stand you were in, we had to wait for about five minutes, which was fine, because I remember everybody sort of being quite happy with the result in the end. But yeah, it was... Uh, it kept us Rogers putting already. his foot in there. Another three... Yeah, that was definitely a foul. This is Rogers, classic Rogers. <laughs> yeah, feisty intonation. Look at him. Quickly Brilliant. taken. Plymouth were really keen, aren't they, to get the ball mm. out and get the ball playing, because um, they can sense they want to try and get that first three points. Good cross. And oh, terrible header. He was flying like a salmon, but terrible header. Should have scored, yeah. Should have yeah, scored should've that. Scored. Can't run the ball though, to be fair. Yeah. So yeah, we're coming into the shots a few to minutes. Nil. Of, yeah, coming to the near the end of the half. Um, I think it's fair to say Plymouth will dominate the play. We haven't yeah. had a shot on target. We're not sure if Gemma has actually touched the ball. <laughs> he shouted at the referee a few times though. So he's that's, got that's involved in, in verbally, but I'm not sure if he's got involved in the game. I just saw plumes of smoke appear in front of the camera, Ollie, which, you know, again, you could smoke in stadiums still back in 2001, couldn't you? No, no uh, social ban for that, you know, that's, a, that's another thing that's gone out of football, but, you know, yuck. You could also stand it. next to each other in these days as well. Yeah, I think everyone's sitting. I don't remember what the stand It was a seating stand, I think. I'm this, talking this referring to social distance. Yeah. Oh, we'll see. Yeah. Yeah. That's a whole new thing we're after used to. Shrews be wasting. Was that a good end back? Up. Bit of time wasting from the goalkeeper. Yeah, you might as well at this stage. I suspect yeah. that we probably did a fair bit of time wasting as this game goes on as we'll watch, but um, yeah. If you had a man sent off in that situation, would you have gone a 4 4 1 or would you have um, gone 4 4 3 2 like um, we talked about in the Berry game that Paul Simpson did? I think opening day, it's difference between opening day and the, the last day of the season, isn't it? Opening day because. The game. Yeah, you're not kind of, um, you know, everything's coming together still, isn't it? So. Um, I guess that you've kind of probably got to do the more defensive thing on opening day, yeah. so I don't really you know, disagree with Rackett did. Um, obviously, it pays off later on, but yeah, I think that you know, when we talk about what Paul Simpson did in the Berry Perth game, that also made sense in the context of that game as yeah. well. They're keen to get that ball to left winger, um, and mm. you can see from that cross that he's two footed. Um, so, yeah, very big tactic from Perth to try and get the, the ball to the, to the left winger. It's a decent player. Having just watched this back then, Ollie, who, who are you going for for man of the half? Let's give a man of the half. From a Shrewsbury perspective, yeah. Or, or uh, I think from a, a Shrewsbury perspective, um, I'd have to go for. Um, I've absolutely no idea because no one's played very well at all. Maybe Cartwright because he's played Cartwright, yeah. a few times. It's got to be Mark Cartwright. He's made like yeah. three good saves, come out and claim quite well. He was a tidy goalkeeper, Mark Cartwright, wasn't he? When he played, you know, I don't. 
you probably did make loads of mistakes, but you, you were raised from your memory. But you know, what? Oh, oh. oh my god! Yeah, Cartwright's definitely man of the half now. That is an <laughs> absolutely horrendous mess. Stonebridge. Yeah, oh my end. god, that was terrible. He had two opportunities to score, and he absolutely fluffed his lines. Really that, good save. Is that, is that pre-season one? rustiness? Possibly, yeah. But yeah, they they must have been gutted to go in half time one 0 watching this. They were they were by far the better team, didn't they? Yeah. That was a great chance, that to be fair. But you know, as we were just saying, I think definitely man of the half, Mark Cartwright, and we'll see whether yeah. that changes as the game goes on. But he's strong. He's pushing people around in the box. You can see him. He's, he's making sure he's got his space to catch things and yeah, doing everything he needs to do to keep us in the game. Oh, Rogers is is off. Go on, Rogers. Go on, my son. What's the speed here? Oh. This is in full flight. You'd love to see it. Oh, uh, Wilding's on the right wing now. Can't, uh, poor counter attack from Drew. Oh, could have got him in. Yeah. Oh, Pete, Pete the feet. He's deadly when he got in in that situation. <laughs> that was a oh, terrible throw out by the goalkeeper. Yeah, uh, it's um, it's not a game that's um, as high in quality. That's for sure. Not all games were terrible in the 2000s. There were there. <laughs> there was there was quality in some games. In I think it just teams. shows. For me, this is a really good example. It just shows you um, that the quality in the low leagues has improved. Probably yes. through the influx of um, foreigners in the, in the top flight, but it's definitely worth saying coaching and conditioning and players just look thinner than they did in these days. Yeah, oh, Jeremy crossed look... the ball. He actually touched the ball, so we have it on record. Yeah, to to, to no one that was. <laughs> no, Not the best. Still no shot on target. You'd be tweeting about this now, wouldn't you, Ben? I'd no have been shot on ra- target. I'd have been opening day Ratcliffe out on Twitter. <laughs> Hashtag Ratcliffe out. <laughs> oh, You'd yeah, be loving this have... team, I don't think. Thing is, I, I, you know, back into back in the two thousands, now yeah, I don't think I was quite as uh, miserable as I am now. So I think I was, you know, quite content just to enjoy a sunny day out and see Town battle hard. And to be fair, you know, Town did battle hard in this game. We're watching us get dominated, but they're making the challenges when they need to make them. You know, Pete Wilding's running around. They're working really hard. It was it was one of those ones where everyone worked really hard for the, for the cause in this game. And so I think that's maybe where I probably was on the day. Red Mill missed a header again. Honestly, it was unbelievable yeah. how many he missed for his size. Yeah, whenever he's oh, yeah, whenever he's competing with someone, he never gets it. A bit of play from Shrewsbury and go long again. To, it does. To it does look like Wilding's right of the centre three and Rogers is out wide. They're, they're quite flexible where they look of what's going on here. It doesn't look like they're, they're 100 percent know <laughs> what they're supposed to be doing. Um, but yeah, they're sort of settling into obviously the new Maybe formation. Maybe half time to calm down. Yeah, well, we're almost at half time now. It'd be a bit of injury time though because that guy was down for like three minutes, wasn't he? So well, yeah, he was killed, to, nearly killed three times. <laughs> <laughs> he's up to 47 minutes now pretty much aren't they? so there we go any interesting signs around the side of the pitch Vauxhall they're still going some of these might be local things also the sort of Stella Stella that's still definitely still going well you can't buy one in the pub anymore he, when he did win headers Matt Romar they never were all that convincing either are they no that's the thing I always remember um, um, comparing him to one of our best century vendors like Connor Goldson Connor Goldson mm. used to always get a good distance on a header which is always for me is a good mark of a good central defender um, I remember yes. watching a Premier League launch and I saw a company head it from me virtually own goal line into the other half like, that's a good header yeah red miles Beef. more a couple yeah. of metres yeah <laughs> backwards <laughs> oh dear Plymouth are definitely dominating here aren't they they've got loads of space and time another Mark cross. Atkins is doing right when he gets on the ball location sorry I talked over you yeah that's fine yeah, I was, I was just trying to say before, to like, offended. Mark Atkins. <laughs> exactly. I say anyone listening to this, we would normally edit out all of that sort of stuff, but this is this is going in live, um, just so you, you don't have to listen yeah. to the sound of, uh, <laughs> of crowds in the background. But yeah, we'll see how it goes. Um, but yeah, I was saying Mark Atkins was neat on the ball in this half. That's the only outfield player I think I give a bit of credit to. He's not the most mobile. Rudy Rogers has done, done a lot of running. Yeah. Yeah. True. That's a no avail. No, no avail. And is this the halftime whistle? One forty-eight. Probably. We only we usually used to get three minutes back in the day, didn't we? No, I sort of noticed that we had no scoreboard. We didn't have a timer and a Rolex um, big screen. <laughs> they probably knocked all that down. <laughs> oh dear. At least Town have put a timer Coughlin. on for us. This, this would be a uh, good He's such a good player, isn't he, Coughlin? Art to deep yeah. uh, Red Mail players. For, um... Get out. Yeah, we're getting up to... We're getting up to uh, quite a lot of extra time now. It's all those fouls yeah. we did on that, on that one player. Yeah, Hoffman's two footed here. Oh, there we go. There's the board. It does exist. Oh, there you go. He's only just putting that now. Hey, eh? what? We're on 48 minutes on these highlights. <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> this is a bit odd. Need to have a word. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe. I don't remember. Yeah, we've definitely watched 49 minutes of football here. So. 
from the process which went on there. We've got another three minutes yet. This is going to go on to like 50 minutes. I did think when they sent us this file to record an audio track over it, was very, very long, Ollie. So, you know, definitely is an injury time, or sorry, extra time in the league game. So A pum of cheating here, trying to um, yeah. get that extra get that goal. I, so. I like the JCB behind the goal. It's a good look as well. It'd be amazing if we did have a shot and it hit the JCB. I was quite hoping that something like that would happen. <laughs> Man, I once played for the Wastewater. Absolutely dominating this game here. Yeah. I was going to give you a good story about hitting something behind a goal there, Ollie. Um, I once played for the Wastewaters and uh, Chris Allen, um, who's a, a town fan a lot of people know, runs the, um, the, the fan zone and does the music there. He, he was playing and he had a shot uh, away at um, Lake Norrie at uh, Hackney Marshes and the shot went behind the goal and it hit a donkey that was uh, tied to a post behind the goal. <laughs> Oh I bet that's the only time that's ever happened in football. That reminds me of um, when um, my first day at a new school. So I was in Shrewsbury for, my, for the first half term, and then I moved mm-hmm. to um, John Taylor High School um, in, in, in Staffordshire. And on my first week, we're playing football with some new friends. I kicked the ball and hit a six former and knocked her down on the head. <laughs> Oops. Yeah. Oh dear. Oh well. Foul of the that's not. I think we should do a Twitter poll which is the better story donkey or six former <laughs> or the six former well, maybe, maybe we'll get we felt quite yeah. embarrassing oh well the big body we're on we 50, 50 minutes here <laughs> maybe they just skipped half time no we're not changed ends have we so no, no we're still going the other way oh my that is an unbelievable miss the, I'll tell you what <laughs> they're going to have a right right act to half time both strikers have had opportunities in the box plenty of time and just absolutely fluff their eyes. I tell That's you, if this, was pre- this, if this was luckily this is pre-Twitter for them. Yeah, it is. Ian, um, oh, can't write quarter again. Um, I was going to say this is the second game we've watched in a row now where Town just conceded loads and loads of chances and got a positive result. And uh, yeah. like Barry, uh, like we watched last week, this Another is uh, foul. a not- bloody hell. Rogers, that wasn't a foul. Harsh. I think someone on the bench might be smoking. Ollie, looking at where the smoke's coming from. <laughs> It might be. Is it stirring? Is it gone for the Italian manager look? The 1990s yeah. uh, Italian manager look. Oh, good uh, one. There we go. Red Mile. He's in that. I think there's a big shield there uh, for the shoes. It's quite a windy day. Good bit of jockey and my brother all like that. <laughs> We're on 51 minutes now. This is the longest half in history. I oh, know. All our old men must be blowing. Look, Matt Redmond's got his hand on the hips. He's knackered. <laughs> Oh, there we go. Half time. Half time. Nil nil. 51. Um, you have to summarise the game, so I'll just do a little quick summary. I think Shrewsbury got battered there. I mean, we also tried to batter one of their central forwards. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, you know, like this season we've been talking about those games where we haven't had a shot at all in the first half. It's, uh, it's almost like this game is here to torment us, reminding us of that. But yeah, you know, we're still in it. They missed their chances. We're down to 10 men. Um, I suppose that the manager's got to get a minute half time and tell him, you know, just let's keep it nil-nil and, and look for a goal on the break. And oh, so what, so what, down, mate. what are you doing? Excuse oh. me, mate. <laughs> no consideration. <laughs> Unbelievable. I think that applause is for the referee. I think it was. <laughs> oh dear, he's getting escorted off. Can't write a red mile in a big chat. Booze for the shoes for town players. Booze for Heathcote, I suppose. Yeah. More than booze, some swear words as well. Yeah. I can hear. Oh dear. And there we go. I don't know Ooh, what happens half now. Half time. Half time. Yeah, half time. Right. So we get a Who's cup of tea, there? and we should be back. So we're out for the second half. Good half time, Glenn. <laughs> it was a bit long. The yeah, magic of editing. It's been hours since we did this, Ollie. But yes, we're back <laughs> to watch this. Up. I've been for a while. Quite run, keen to see what happens. Second half. But we're making a sub, Ollie. I don't know if you just saw that. Oh. Oh, there you go, yeah, that's the way to do it. Um, as you can see, though, we just made a sub, Ollie. I, w- I was meaning to start yep. for a kick off, and who's just come on? I have no idea, mate. Over to you. It's Josh Walker. <laughs> it's Josh Walker, yeah. Um, yeah, he was a, a young lad who'd been released by Manchester United in the summer um, and was looking for a club to sort of start his football league career off with. And uh, I was reading a programme from a few weeks after this where uh, uh, Tim Clackott, um, who used to do these sort of interviews with the players, um, was talking to him about why he signed and he said it seemed like a good club and I thought why not <laughs> so obviously massively influenced <laughs> to come and play That's for us but yeah um, yeah different days in this time I guess probably agents probably weren't so um, as, as intense as stuff for the young lads a bit like how obviously we've had um, 
I've obviously signed a play for Man United in January and maybe the yes. players don't know much about the clubs as, as they do now I suspect not no but you know say for him I suppose it was a good opportunity to get out from that um, sort of Man United youth system and come and play some, some real football but uh, yeah, it was uh, it, it was an interesting substitution anyway because yeah. he came on for um, obviously the had the man down as, as we watched the first half. But yeah, he came on for Luke Rogers, who apparently had picked up a knock. So um, yeah, he worked quite hard, but I think yes. it's fair to say the um, game was starts quite scrappy, lot of headers, <laughs> um, and yeah, we're playing balls down the channels again. And they are now they're now attacking the JCB, uh, yeah. and we're now attacking JCB the JCB end. <laughs> the JCB end, and we're attacking the man with the surveying equipment down the other end. Um, but yes, down to ten, and obviously now only with Jemson up front, so uh, even Ooh, trickier. Holy mother! Mm. That was a two-footed challenge. But yeah, just play, play on. on. <laughs> <laughs> Standard of the, of the of this era, I think, from the games we've watched back so far, Ollie. But um, yeah, look at that view in the background. I do like it. And about the ability, of, you know, opening up to sort of look down into that little valley there. But um, yeah, I think obviously a bit of a cagey start here. Taron trying to actually get the ball and all onto it. Well, it's Plymouth at the moment, isn't it? All the way, but. Yeah, I get the feeling we're in for even more defending this half, Ollie. I think it's going to be a attack defence again, um, with long balls and uh, yeah, Gemmo um, stretching his legs um, throughout this game and <laughs> running down and lost causes. You think and we're back actually... down to 50, 46 minutes after that special <laughs> extra long first half. We've literally, literally gone back in time here, Ollie. So um, yeah, there, there we go. I mean, it's just worth talking about Plymouth again as, as we're getting sort of battered by them. I, I, we did talk about this in the first half, Ollie, about how good they were, but. They went on to win the league with a record of 102 points this season, which is wow. pretty mental, isn't it? I'm not sure whether that's ever been beaten, I doubt it. Maybe Wolves got close, but... Uh, yeah. 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 Well, it must be pretty good. Um, because, uh, yeah, it, I can't remember many teams getting 100-odd points. You no, know, Man, Man City got it in the Premiership, didn't they? Did they get it? Yeah. No, I can't remember. No, but it's, 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 no. It would be hard because it's 24 yeah. games. 24 teams. <laughs> Absolute so. stupid comment. Um, but, yeah, as I say, and, and you know, when you're doing something like that, clearly you're going to be pushing when you go up into the next division as well. So, um, yeah, that, that was interesting, to be fair. It was probably just what we're talking about pre-season as well, so we didn't quite cover that in the first half. But um, a few people remember Town's last game before this, which was a, a game against Wolves at home. And we never really played Wolves in pre-season very much. And, and I think we didn't play them for quite a while after this because it was a game that there was a lot of football trouble at. Where um, okay. some Wolves fans got in the home end, and then they tried to take them round past the riverside, and they all jumped in, and there was a big ruck. I remember as a, you know, a, a lad being there and sort of running away from. Getting involved? Already. No, God no. You know, <laughs> um, you know, dangerous ball into yeah. the box there. Close, long range, it blocked. Terrible. Oh, that, that, that's down again, bloody hell! He's going to wake up with a few bruises. He must be the. He, obviously, this is the first game of the season, but he's definitely the most foul player in the league at this point. Yeah, he's going to be top of those charts that's for sure um, oh another puff of smoke yeah you see quite a lot isn't it? it's very yeah. packed in that stand though to be fair it is um, yeah as you said no social distancing only in the first half but um, no magic so, yeah. spray and the referee's just doing it old school yep get on with it lads no spray for where from the, the ooh. oh my god oh it hit the JCB <laughs> oh it did <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> I was hoping that would happen. That's made my day watching this back now. Yeah, JCB hits one, uh, goals nil at the moment. So, uh, yeah, the construction work has gone to get the ball back, hasn't it? But um, I think the way this stands set up, though, is Town were trying to probably play this game out and um, <laughs> slow it down. The fact there was no ball boys and, and just a massive area behind probably helped us with our time wasting in this game, by the way. <laughs> oh, dear. Well, they've got another JCB to hit there, the red one. So, we'll have to see if they can make it two for two. For the um, but yeah, as I say, I, I, I think this is going to be very slow for the town. Um, so yeah, Cartwright kicks it out, and yeah, that's straight back to Plymouth almost. You know, Jags has brought it down. Oh no, Jags has got it. Yeah, but no. Right, lose it again. again. Oh. No, nothing doing, nothing doing. Coughlin Plex, it's calm, it's good to play in this game. He's really good, yeah. yeah. It, it is amazing watching this back so far, knowing what the final score was. <laughs> Thinking, <laughs> how does this happen? <laughs> because we've shown yeah, absolutely we nothing. Yeah, <laughs> shown absolutely nothing. So, um, yeah, we'll have to see how it, how it develops second half. But um, that's five minutes gone, and it's basically been all them again, hasn't it? So, um, yeah, it's it's, uh, it's going to be tough on it. Here we go. Yeah, Another time of attack. Tan sitting quite deep, sitting on the central defenders, are playing really deep there on the on the edge of the penalty area. I'm obviously quite concerned about their pace or our lack of. 
I was thinking that, looking at the way it's set up this flex second half, it does look like we've taken a little bit of a step back, haven't we, in, in terms of sitting deeper. And I suppose that's fair enough. With Rogers going off, we're, we're a much more uh, defensively minded team here, I guess, now. And, and, and I think that, you know, Ratcliffe must, regardless of what happened in the end, but he must have just been thinking, let's get a point out of this. And um, I'm, not, I'm not entirely sure what the tactic would have been here to, to, to hit Rod, to hit Jemson, and just hope he holds it and someone gets up with him. I guess that's all we really, really had now. Yeah, tough. Jags was, it's quite interesting because we've, you know, no natural wingers on the pitch now at all, I suppose, no, no. because Jagielka wasn't really a natural winger, Josh Walker wasn't, Wilding, Wilding isn't. isn't. So you might as well just pump it down the middle and hope it comes back off Jemson and, and someone else gets up onto it. That really, really yeah, looks to be tackle. like what we've got. Yeah, is that Josh Walker? On the counter. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, it's a good start to him in the game, isn't it? Oh That's my god, that touch. touch. Horrendous. <laughs> Jagielka. He's been poor in this game, to be fair. I mean, we'll probably criticise all the forward players because they didn't really do much, but his touch has been a bit woeful, hasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, talking of Jagielka, came through the Stoke Youth system. He did. 175 games at Shrewsbury and before leaving in 2017 for Sheffield United, where he didn't play, went to Stanley, and then, a bit like Carl Murray, then went on to play on um, Long League football. You know, he went to Sheffield United, though, don't you? Yeah, probably because of his brother. He <laughs> probably got him a contract, and just yeah. I think like after his time with Town, he, he I think he went and spent a while not playing, and then wanted to get his fitness back. So I think it was one of those ones where he went there, tried to get his fitness back. You know, had a chance of a, of a crack of it. Yeah, never impressing the manager, but no, he, he never played too fair. And it must be quite a weird thing for for him to be like the brother that didn't kind of. He obviously made it as a football. Well, a bit room. like um, Gerard's brother. <laughs> yeah, well, horrendous for us. <laughs> he's a bit. He had the bit of the Matty Ridmore about. He's not his thing. brother. He's his cousin, isn't he? It was his cousin. Yeah, he's his cousin. Yeah. He's his cousin. Yeah. They're being, related. Yeah, they're related. But being a brother is a bit different, I think, because you obviously yeah. would have grown up together. And uh, I, I don't know. But, um, yeah, it, but you know, and Jigelka had a decent career for us and, and a couple of other clubs. But when your, when your brother's excelled and gone on to play for England and, and all of that, and, and your younger brother as well, it's a bit. Um, it must. Be, must be a bit of a kick in the teeth, but I'm sure I'm sure they've enjoyed their football careers together. And um, yeah, it's it's interesting. There's not you know you don't get it too many times the Nevilles and, and things like that. Two brothers coming through to play professional football with you. No, not at all. So yeah, good tackle I thought there from from Rio. Good bit of defending. Uh, again, yeah. bit a bit of trivia about him. So he he managed to get a UEFA A coaching license at the age of 23, <laughs> which is quite young, isn't it? Um, obviously, his dad um, is a former Arsenal, um, Scotland international, Arsenal yep. manager, Scotland international, um, and he's currently the um, academy manager of Wigan. So he's still in the game. Yeah, he's still in the game. He's definitely up there in one of my all-time. Uh, I will, I'll find it very hard to give Gregory out credit for anything. To be honest, we after the conference season where you know. He- <laughs> He was awful in the relegation season and he was not very impressive in the conference season either. I remember we went away to Dagenham uh, um, in the conference season and he must have had, you know, like you think about those all-time worst performances you see a player have. Um, yeah, I think he was probably his best for us during this season because after that he went down dramatically and, and a lot of it was fitness related. He seemed to puff, seemed to be puffing into games that second season but he wasn't... Everyone was wasn't. unfit in well, that second season. To it, it was so a shock. He probably spent more time in the pub than he did on the training ground. <laughs> well, some of them spent more time in Nottingham, didn't they? And just yeah. trained over there and just turned up for games on Saturdays. But um, yeah, that ended up buying us in the house in the end. But yeah, Gregory, I mean, he looks solid enough so far in this game. But um, Pete... Oh, how is that not a foul on Peter's feet? Hands sitting so deep, <laughs> just giving their, their back four have so much time on the ground. Oh, Pete's still there. He is down. I think he, get, he gets injured again, reading the programmes. He, um, he, uh, he's he he got an injury for the next oh, few games. Bit of fair play, play so from the pillar. Possibly, pillar possibly this is what the injury was. I think he did his shoulder or something. He's holding his leg, though. Oh, he's holding his leg. Though. Yeah, I'm not sure. I read something about his shoulder. But, yeah, it's not great to see old Pete down. Um, he did try and, try and fly in there, but... Uh, he gets substituted but not until later on in the game so he must have had a knock and then come off a bit later on but it doesn't look good for him does it? No that's uh, pretty old school referee's got a hanky out <laughs> It's pretty old school isn't it? Yeah I'm trying to remember what physio is at the time uh, I can't remember now off the top of my head it's, it, was, it might have been uh, was a lady called Rachel was our physio for a while no, wasn't it? I don't I think can't it was a no, it might be after, but it might have been before that. But. Yeah, I remember her. She was tiny, wasn't she? Yeah. She can fly on the pit. Um, oh, it's Sharma Shakespeare, isn't it? I was just saying. Yeah, there you go. It, it was him, wasn't it? Because I was saying about his, his match reports. Yeah, there he is. Oh, that's, that's Simon. Oh, there we go. Nice nice message from the crowd there. <laughs> no fourth officials that back then either, was there? So, mm-hmm. yeah, they just can kind of get on with it on the side of the pitch. Jemson was uh, having a chat with their manager. It wasn't their manager, one of their coaches, I think. So, um, there's Mark Atkins. Look at Pete. What a warrior. 
he doesn't want to come off, does he? He's clearly got some sort of injury, but yeah, <laughs> I guess when you're down to 10 men and you've only got two subs left, you don't really have much of a choice. Um, oh, do you think Atkins was trying to kick that out of play and miss, miss Yeah, I it? think so. <laughs> <laughs> best on it straight away. It wasn't the best. Here we go, reload. Here they come again. You just look when we when the game starts back how deep we are. So our yeah. midfield is central field was on my home team uh, sorry, the centre circle there. We're really sitting deep. It's definitely different to that to the way we played yeah. in ten minutes. I can't even stuff. see any of our players yet. Oh, no. yeah. Roger Rogers. Yeah, look at that. He's like five of them in the middle. Atkins is really deep. Look at look how deep he is. He's like behind the defence at one point there. And you're going to think, how the hell do we get out? Get, get There's away a lot from. of respect to the opposition here. Yeah, too much. Probably. But we're down to ten, now, so that's fine. It is remarkable that they, you know, look, they've not created anything so far this half, have they? Have they? No. To be fair. Oh, that's a good ball. Oof. Ooh, bloody hell! That's a foul. <laughs> he took out one of our men, though, didn't he? Well, look a bit there. He took out the goalkeeper. Physio's busy. Oh my god, that was pretty nasty. Did well, well though, Karch, right there. Brave. He did. Stocky. Oh, he, did, he didn't hit one of our players. Red one. Mail's puffing like mad. <laughs> Look at him, he's absolutely knackered. Look at the state of it's that It's only round. 56 minutes in and he's absolutely knackered. <laughs> he's been chasing a lot around, but it's embarrassing, isn't it? I mean, yeah. Heathcote's got his It just shows you how much um, lower league football is. So we were talking about the Marine <laughs> game, how unfit they were, and even Shrewsbury's team didn't look particularly fit. This just is... shows you how much the game's gone, because he, he shouldn't have... Yeah, that's not a good image. No. <laughs> There's a lot of people with hands on hips, though, isn't there? If you look around, oh, you know, yeah. him, Plymouth player there, another one, you know, one of our lads in the Wilding's middle there. not there, he's fine. Yeah. He's just a beast, isn't he? But I guess he, there's that pre-season fitness thing as well, isn't there? That it takes a it takes a while to come off and, and kind of you know get up to your proper levels. Um, You've been everyone, too kind. Yeah, everyone looks knackered. It's really bizarre. <laughs> like, there's Mark Atkins. He's double teapot. There's a lo- <laughs> loads of people with double teapot at the moment. Both hands on hips, but yeah, nice bit of time wasted. Right. It's taken us through. Yeah, it, yeah, it's taken us through another couple of minutes. It was it was interesting because um, for a while Cartwright and Dumbavin. We never really seem to have a consistent goalkeeper. Someone would pick up a little niggle and someone would play like 10 games and then they switch around again. It was like, you know, normally you get a keeper playing the whole game and then, you know, in this era, and then, you know, your reserve keeper will play if there's a little, you know, serious injury or they play in the cups. But this season and, and the next season, they seem to switch it around quite a bit, which is yeah. quite <laughs> Terrible ball from Gemma. Gemma's not happy with that. He's just running around for nothing. That was a poor ball from Wilder. No, it was... Uh... Funny talk about Cartwright. Yeah. And um, again, bit of trivia on Cartwright. Um, so we signed we signed him in the summer from Brighton Hard Albion at this game. Um, he only played 100 games in his career. It's a bit like Luke Daniels. You thought Luke Daniels would have a good career, but he's hardly played in his career either. Mm. Um, and then after that, he went on to be a manager of Leek. Um, but then quite really interesting, for seven years, he was the um, director of... Um, a technical director, so a kind of a hybrid of a director of a football role, at Stoke mm. City. So he kind of went into, the, you know, into that role. So that's quite interesting. Yeah, yeah. I just oh, was watching. Foul. You got a chance. What is he doing? I don't know. Why is he rushing? Calm down. I was just watching Gemmo there in that little passage of paper for him. He looked like he looked, he looked like such an old man playing football. Then he's obviously knackered from running around on his own up front. But he's thirty-two in this game. He definitely had a languid style, didn't he, old Gemmo? Yeah. <laughs> oh okay. dear, it's uh, it is opportunity to get the big men forward. Oh, Red Mars going up. Here we go. It'll take him twenty-five minutes to get back on it. That's our, that's our biggest problem. I hope he doesn't listen to this. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> Here we go. Oh, it's a sh- Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. After all that. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Who was Red that acting? going to be cursing as he comes back. Oh, that's no. Massive. That was horrendous. I think they had to do that to give uh, Redman enough time to get back. <laughs> kind that of a shot. horrendous set piece. That was uh, from the training ground, Ollie. What do you, really? make, of, um, what do you make of goalkeepers with trousers? I hate it. It's, it's, it's in the middle of the first game of the season when it's hot. It's almost as bad as F.E. Soji wearing gloves in that game we covered against uh, against Berry the other week, which was like end of the season and boiling hot. It's not. It's not a great because it reminds me of Russian goalkeepers or yeah. like Dmitry Karin. He always used to wear trousers, didn't he? Do you remember him? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Good. I was, I was wondering whether I'd, I'd lost it. Yeah, he, he used to run for Chelsea all the time, didn't he? But no, not a fan. What about you, Ollie? No, it seems a bit unnecessary to be honest. The goalkeeper shirts, is their goalkeeper shirts, very nineties esque, like end of the nineties. It's quite um, retro looking. Um, what did you make of this kit, Ollie? I liked this kit a lot. Yeah, these kits are alright, but I don't know why. I just I always find them a bit odd when they're just so baggy. You just get so much material. Yes, that's true. Yeah, they're but... huge, like tents. It was an alright kit. 
the Iron Chef. Yeah, yeah, it was all right. Yeah, it was. It's it, it, to be fair, it, it's it's synonymous with that relegation again, isn't it? So it's almost like you kind of see that shirt, you think, oh, <laughs> do you? Yeah, I, as you know, I like all different kind of kits, and I was a mascot in a white kit. Um, yes. But if you're going to play blue or whatever, for me, you've got to have some kind of amber stripes in there. Mm. Poor Gemma then. Just hoof straight to yes, him. Yes, yeah, two men just, on him. It's a bit of a thankless toast. <laughs> the goalkeeper's like out, outside the box playing now. He wants to get involved. Oh, Redmar. He's completely missed his header. Oh, what a save. Ooh, oh, what a save from Cartwright. Did, did you see Redmar in that, though? Just yeah. totally missed his header. Oh, my God. That was a great save, though. It looked like a foul. Yeah, that was a really that. good save. Cartwright, again, um, he's, he's, he's definitely winning the chance of being... Ooh, there they are. Um, the man of the match. <laughs> Yes, it's not going to be Good save in the first half, and another good save there. Oh dear. And here they come again. Here they come. How many attacks? This is way more one sided than the Berry game we watched as well, isn't it? Like we got battered in this game. This is unbelievably one sided. (laughs) Oh dear. We're so deep. They can't figure it out though, can they? No, they're not. They should be trying to take run the ball forward. Mm. I guess this is a sign of a team that's just only just been put together. Yeah. Um, and obviously they're going to improve as the season went on. They had wingers as well, so it's not like, you know... But they're just playing too long, aren't they? They're going to play it too short. Too direct all the time, yeah. Look, yeah. Who there we go, another, another hoof. That's what, exactly what we wanted. I mean, they play, yeah. they're totally playing yeah, into play, our hands. Yeah, you're right. I was just thinking the same thing, they're playing into our hands here. Yeah. Oh, well. I'm sure Stark figured that out after a few games. <laughs> Sure he did. Yeah, he's a decent manager. Uh, is he still back managing now? I'm not too sure. I'm not sure. Should have looked that up, but he was definitely around for a long time, wasn't he? And uh, decent, decent lower league manager. Here they go, direct again. Out wide this time. That's what they should be doing, Ollie. Getting it out to their winners and trying to run, trying to run our fullbacks. But um, yeah, we are, we are defending manfully, to be fair. Got to give them a huge amount of credit at the moment for the way that they're standing up to all these attacks mm-hmm. and, and you know apart from Red Moss winning most of the headers if they try to run us out we've been quite we've been quite good when it's on the ground as well so yeah interesting about Broke Sturridge this, Ollie. <laughs> interesting about Sturridge he was a one club Sturridge man. Paul Sturridge sorry <laughs> it's alright yeah. Sturridge yeah Paul Sturridge he was a one club man he only yes. played for Dundee United uh, okay. um, after Plymouth he went to Southampton I remember that now Sheffield Wednesday Swindon Town and then he went back to Plymouth again um, yeah. in, in 2017 Oh, you went back in the end, man. Yeah. Oh, I don't. I never. Oh, another good effort. I never a, agree with managers and stuff going back. Never go back. Or, or never those. go back. Never go back. <laughs> hey, when you said we'd signed a, a Sturridge, I was wondering whether you could remember the name of the Sturridge we did once sign. There's a quiz question. No. Simon Sturridge. Simon Sturridge. Yeah. Did he ever play for us? Oh, he played a few games. I think he was around for too long. Might have been a lone player. No, I don't know much about him, but I uh, remember we did sign a storage once, so there we go, that is a... Yeah, that on loan in 2000, there you go. 11 games. That was the season before this, then. There we go. Yeah. Yeah. There we go, right era. I, I thought I, I remember his name came back into me. So it. Yes, Gemma wins a foul. Giving the referee sarcastic applause. <laughs> High five off Pete. Oh dear, this is the only way we can get in there after the moment. I, I don't remember how we, we eventually go on to score here, but you've got to think it comes from the set piece on it. Yeah, if it's a shot, it's going to be a remarkable event. Uh, I, I'm kind of hoping it's the only shot we have on target in this whole game. <laughs> It'd be it's hilarious. Quite sweet, but here we go. He's doing right with the ball at the feet, Jenna. Like, yeah, we, he we'll is. Get it to him. Oh, that's that's a good run. Jags. Inside channel. Uh-huh. It's the best football of the half, this. There we go. This is the best. Yeah, you're right. We're actually passing the ball. Look at this. It's a bit of football. Oh, oh go on. Hey. Oh, bloody hell. That was good. Wilding smash it. Oh, <laughs> Wilding comes in with a meaty challenge. Oh, Dean and Jags. Hey, we seem to have gotten oh. slightly motivated all of a sudden. That was definitely the best part of the game for yeah, us. That was, a, that was <laughs> the most watched, entertaining bit of football we've had so far. I've been watching over an hour of today. Yeah, oh, we're straight out. Really Better. Well, we've got them worried now, Ollie. I think they're on the ropes. <laughs> Do you think maybe it is a bit of a rope rope this? They, we just let them attack us time after time after time, and then we, we kind of hit them later on when they're retired. It's the ingenious what? tactics. One of the things happened then that always I find really funny is that wingers always want to take throw-ins, don't they? Yes. They always yeah. get the ball and always try and take a throw-in. It's really odd. And they, really get, like. give it back and they always the give it back to fullback. Yeah. yeah. It's a bit frustrating, isn't it? It's weird, the, the little entrance and exit way from their tunnel in yeah. the net in Obviously got a bit violent. It looks, like a Ru- or it looks like a Russian stadium of some kind that you could, <laughs> they're worried about the ultras or something. But um, yeah, there we go. There's tons of Plymouth fans. They get a lot of fans nowadays, don't they? they yeah, they this do. Is, like us, their ground really spurred them onto a sort of new level of a sport, didn't it? 
few years until it was finished though. I think they I think they had it for the start of the next season when it was totally finished, this three sides of the ground, so it took them quite a while. Demolished it quick, but then took them a while to build it back up. So um but yeah, it's, it's a nice stadium. I haven't been I don't think I've been back to Plymouth many times since this game, if I'm honest with you, Because no. well, they were above us been, for ages. Yeah. And then they were below us for ages as yeah. well. Yeah. Yeah, I think I've I've done this might have been out. Oh god. Corner, Mark Atkins. <laughs> Just cleared it out fine. Even though he's not outside the box, that was a oh no, short corner. Are we, were we switched on for that, do you think, Ollie? Didn't really look no. like it. Oh. Away again, though. There we go. Counter. This is where you want Jemmo. <laughs> on his own. Who's that him. bombing through? Oh. Is that young Walker? Walker? He's quick, isn't he? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, did the right thing there. He's not good. He's not, he's not quick getting back, is he? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> was it offside? No, no playing on. That's bizarre. Yeah. That was just the game seemed to stop him playing it. He's, it's so funny watching people are trying to play just this completely different role than they. Because he literally played in our league all the time before. He's played for like Newtown, Telford, and then suddenly decided he got a, got a chance with us and played league football for hundreds and hundreds of games. It was a bit of a meteoric rise from the level he'd been playing at. Very odd. Easy. Best. Do you know what? We're 66 in now. They've not created a thing in this half, No. It's sitting really back strange, worked. isn't it? Yeah. Sitting back has really worked for us in this. It's um, it's really sort of stymied the game up, hasn't it? I guess if you're going to have a game when you have a man sent off in the first half, the first game of the season ain't necessarily a bad one. No, I guess not. And I mean, yeah, Carl Murray was a, probably a bit of a miss, but um, I think we did have a few other midfielders we could kind of bring in or, or people could sort of move around. Um, so it probably wasn't the worst player to get sent off. I guess if we'd have got a Rodgers or a, or a Jensen off early in the season, it would have probably been a bit of a, a bigger pill to swallow. But... Yeah, it's interesting. I say the away form was better at the start of the season than the home form. I was reading a programme and Ratcliffe was sort of lamenting the performance. I think it was against Oxford where we didn't do very well, so oh Yeah, it was a, well. good as you say, good season for Plymouth. Didn't start the season well, no. but then just went on as you'd imagine. So they went on to some amazing, amazing bits of run in terms of in terms of um, results. Interesting Kidderminster played them against them at one point as well. Yeah, we played them a few weeks later, I think. Yeah. When they were yeah. in the football league. So. Here we go. Sub for them. I cannot read what that says. I'll tell you what the sub is, Ollie. I've got it. I've got it. I've got it on here. This is what are we at now. So 65. Dean Crow uh, coming on up front for Ian Stonebridge. Um, who seems to have run himself a bit a bit ragged, really. Interesting you talk about them obviously getting a record points total. Mm. Um, they scored 25 goals less than Newton, who came second. Wow. So they, they came, they came, they won the league, but they had um, 71 goals, but they only conceded 28. So the yeah. defence... It's pretty impressive. Is, yeah. Obviously, Graham Coffin contributed a lot to that. Mm. You see where they let Nicky Eve go there then, can't you, if that yeah. was the sort of quality of defence there. Um, Cartwright did well there with that ball into the box in the corner, sort of, sort of spam and it out. Uh, oh, there's so much coming into the box. Again, Cartwright. <laughs> he was afraid to come out. never guess. So of all the players on the pitch... Go on. Who was their top goal scorer in this in the season? Uh, is it Frio, the one that got nobbled a few no. times? Graham Coffin. No way. Yeah, he got eleven goals. Oh, he got under that header. Eleven yeah. goals he scored. That's pretty impressive, isn't it? Yeah. He was great, to be fair. Oh, Ian Jake. See, that's why I didn't like Gregory. <laughs> Things like that. <laughs> He's left a man injured though, so that's fine. <laughs> Play on. Oh, look at the camera. Oh, dear. Stay down, lad. Waste some time for us. Yeah. That's the town bench there, isn't it? So we had the Patrick Patrick training way, which I always thought was pretty horrible to be fair. Just the really 90s ish still, even though it was like the 2000s, it was quite uh, retro. I think I've got some Patrick stuff from when I was that age that I've got in the attic somewhere. It's funny how much football stuff you collect over the years, isn't it? Kits and bits of training stuff that you just never throw away because it's your club, isn't it, Ollie? It feels bad to throw a football kit away, doesn't it? I throw stuff away. Do you? Not a whole oh. Yeah. That is sacred. You throw, not you shirts. Um, I was going to say um, not not really shirts, but um, something like that, like football stuff on that. Such an adult play. Well, those days are beyond us. Here we go. Fun, interestingly, actually, read, again, reading the program, the away supporters were still going. Well, were going at this point. They've been going since the eighties. Um, uh, under Chris Wynn Chris Wynn was their manager at the time. Um, who, play, who was playing when I started, and I think he finished by the time you started. But um, they had a game this morning against the Plymouth fans. Uh, so we've been up early, driven down, and drew 1 1 and were rescued oof, by Good save uh, from Cartwright again. a young lad called Tim Placart, who used to write in the programme as well. He made his debut for the way sports that morning, came on and scored the equalising goal for it on his debut. So at least we had the, you know, we had some reasonably good results, I suppose, between this and our way sports. It was a good, yeah. a good day for town down in, on the coast. 
Yeah. Good pass from the full back there. Gemma. Look at that Gemma. Absolutely. It looked like a terrible... Oh, God. It looked like a terrible pass, but it was okay, actually. Too soon. Too soon, Walker. Frustrating. That was a poor run. Yeah. Um, talking of Plymouth, there's always something, again, quite special about going to Plymouth or Torquay or I don't know it may, may, maybe just those two I suppose when you go down into sort of Cornwall Devon and you've got a you can have a weekend away in, in sort of Torquay or in or Plymouth or Exeter as well I suppose some people did it for yeah, it's yeah. yeah I guess so not so much Blackpool because it's always northern it's normally cold but I always used to like my trips down to those games they're always fantastic kind of uh, weekends away when we went with a bunch of mates so um, I'm sure a lot of town fans who were there that day had done that We were finally running out of things to talk about in this game. <laughs> <laughs> There's no problem. <laughs> Drop you. I think anyone watching this will totally understand. No, it's um, yeah. It's there's not a lot of action to talk about. <laughs> even no even Stewie Dunn will be struggling in this one. Oh man, it's like been zero chance. I think there's been was it one save Carl Wright's made? Been, yeah, well? one good save from Carl Wright. There's also a good save where he made where he got clobbered as well. Yeah. But in terms of real chances, yeah, it's been quite quite far, few and far between. Attritional. Yeah. yeah. Very attritional. But we've got 71. There is there is some excitement coming. Stay tuned. We, we know. This is coming back in time. But, yeah, it's it's going to be out of the blue. It, I've also seen some interesting pictures in the programmes of how town celebrated this goal. So um, it, it's worth watching that because I think they, they, it was the era of sort of team-related celebrations. You don't, don't need to get that very much anymore, do you? You know, celebrations have kind of gone out of the game a little bit. What are you, you talking about? Well, a little bit. Like when the whole team will do something. Oh. Oh. Here we go. Oh. This is it. <laughs> All that so time. fans are just to the left of us. Then, we are. You? Oh my goodness me! There's Jags on it. Oh, that is that is an awful miss. Awful. Jemo's hugging him, saying, "Don't worry about that." Yeah, he got put straight in. Oh, there's another guy cleared out. Um, Goalkeeper took him out. He had an open goal then. All he had to do was put a bit of a bit of loft on it, and it was one nil. I can, I can, that's the best chance in the whole game. Yeah, that's, it un- is. that's an unbelievable miss. Unbelievable chance. Uh, Red Mole's having a little walk up there, so that's nice. Um, yeah, but a break though. I think that they have two players running into each other watching that. Yeah, back. I think it was, I thought it was the, well, the goalkeeper. Uh, it was a bit quick and a bit blurry. But yeah, yeah. He really should have scored there. He's been coming out quite a lot, that keeper. So maybe that was a, a sort of warning for him to sort of stay home really when he's not needed because I think the defence had that covered. But that was Jags, wasn't it? He scored a lot of goals like that. It, the kind of running through and being the sort of third man in attacks. Um, he kind of didn't ever play a number 10 role, but it would be that one that pops up. Um, that's kind of the the sort of thing that he did and then the goals that he scored he played wide quite a lot as well didn't he but yeah um, I always remember him as a winger yeah I suppose he, uh, yeah. I don't know, he played in both positions I think over the time of this. Yeah, but he played a lot of games for us as well so um, like most players at this era midfield players you tended to get shunted around and play a whole lot of different positions didn't you because it was just what football was like yeah it was, it was a bit simple wasn't it formations yeah. and positions were a bit more simple a lot, of, a lot less um, specialised than they are essentially this guy's really groggy look at him he doesn't know where he is. He can only walk then for a second. Off him. It is, yeah. Carry on, lad. Carry on. Concussion or not. <laughs> no, no concussion tests. <laughs> Just uh, deal with it post-match with a, with a pass. Here we go, corner. Oh, decent chance again. And then back to uh, another corner. Oh, my goodness. Rising opportunity. <laughs> We're all over him, mate. We're all over him. Suddenly woken up. Yeah. I think, you know, I, yeah. I, I wouldn't say we were worth a goal yet, are we? <laughs> No, it's been not better. at all. Not at all. <laughs> Have you spotted better. yourself yet? No, I can't see myself, to be honest. I am there somewhere. Oh, good whip again, man. Ball back in. Oh! And it's a goal. goal! Oh, he's got the merest of touches on a long chat. Tra- tra- Here we go, this is a big celebration. See what I mean? We don't, you don't see this very often. No. <laughs> For obvious reasons. Those guys are all like 30-something. <laughs> For obvious reasons. He's absolutely loving it. I can't remember. Considering there's some 35 year old blokes here, that's quite embarrassing. Look at Gemma. He knew how to celebrate, didn't he? Fair play. He did. It was, it was definitely something about drinking and then, <laughs> and then <laughs> sort of running. You can there's a big drinking cup in the square. I, yeah, I'm sure that someone will know what that celebration was about, and I'm sure at the time I, I remember it, but there was, it was that's definitely quick, something. Quick turnaround again, something you noted in the other games. You know, you take a long time to get the, the ball back now, centre, centre taken. Yeah, they got But yeah, good, a decent effort. Oh, yeah, Good I wonder. Goal. I'd have to look back and see it was about that long shot because that's what set the goal up, wasn't it? I think it was maybe Atkins. Is it Rayok maybe from yeah. the left back position? Could have been. 
Um, and then Gemma's got the nearest nearest to touches, really. A bit of a sniffer's goal. Yeah, the ball again, hanger. Scored a lot of goals like that, didn't you? But, um, yeah, you've got to be there to, to score. And, yeah, oh, it's a good, good moment. Good to watch that back. It's a goal that, you know, we, no one's seen. This has been this footage has been hidden for years and years and years in, in Ian Whitfield's VHS library. And this is why I like watching these things right now, just to remember, to remember moments like this. And, and yeah, see a Gemma goal. It's been a long time. Yeah, some fans are on, you can hear some fans getting a little bit angry now. Well, the amount of chances they've had, they must have been cursing themselves. And the fact that they've been had ten men, we've had ten men for such a long time. Yeah. Oof, good challenge. Yeah, you're gonna. I think they're gonna get chances still. Although, you know, as I said, we've had three better chances in this half than they have so far. So. That's not a foul. Line up. That's not a foul. He's used his body. What are you doing, son? <laughs> Unbelievable. Terrible linesman. Terrible. Um, yeah, here we go. So they get everybody up now. I, I'm wondering how. I mean, they're already gambling those men forward, aren't they? But I'm sure they're going to have to throw everything at us now. Um, yeah, it'd be, it'd be interesting. The man behind the goal with the high vis jacket doesn't look best pleased, either. Oh, it's good delivery, that. Should have scored. Someone should have got near it anyway. Oof, close. Uh, showing us why they weren't so good at scoring goals in this game. <laughs> why their defence was uh, the best part of their game. But all, all that little moment came from the keeper rushing out, didn't it? It caused oh, yeah. a, a bit like the mad moment and two corners. Um, and then yeah they've scored from it so it, it did show that they were possibly being a little bit too naive in how de- deep, way, deep way they were and if the keeper had sort of stayed at home and just trusted their normal defensive shape they probably wouldn't have got themselves in that trouble but um, yeah it, it ended up costing them hugely didn't it yeah just been handed a card Glenn <laughs> oh have you the attendance 5,087 <laughs> brilliant it's not bad opening day is it considering no. most of the rest of it. I wonder how much you can get in this one stand whether it's just probably 5,087 yeah there we go I was just going to say, how much was the programme? Back in the day, uh, as I say, £2. It's not much, but it's more expensive than days, is it, to be fair? So, um, yeah, that's programme that's of the year, I guess. Yeah. Oh, Con- confusing them playing a high line. Rod yeah. Mel's f- <laughs> He's absolutely boxed, <laughs> isn't he, to be fair? Oh, Ollie, I'm not sure what you're allowed to. I might have to beat that. This is you official. Have to beat that out. This is official. She's <laughs> 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 retiring. Yeah, no, they're not going to get away with that. <laughs> I'll remember that. Seventy-seven minutes. I'll, I'll beep it out. Yeah, let's 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 be kinder and say he's blowing um, and he's, he's, he doesn't look very fit. Um, this double sub time looks like it. Let's let's go through the subs. Hold on, let me tell you who we've got here. Yeah. So it says John Betherswick came on, came off for Sean Evers and the uh, the striker Mickey Evans. So they changed both their front two. He came off for Martin Britton. Uh, I think there's a bit of a lower league journeyman as well. So. Yeah, yeah, there we go, that's the subs on there. Yeah, there we go. He's had two spells at, um, at Plymouth, did, did Evans. Oh, He's right, had a okay. second spell here, played yeah. for Baggies in Southampton. He was a tricky little player, from what I can remember of him when he played against us. It was not like a, an out-and-out number nine, I think he was more of a sort of tricky player at our level. He didn't seem to, seem to get too many off. But no, he didn't get many goals. No. 87 in his whole career, 500 games. John Lewis did numbers, get one cap for Ireland. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Another long ball. Jockey. Gadget. Their long balls are poor, aren't they? Mm. Distribution from Plymouth has been terrible. Not Playing too many channel balls and it's just not working for them. And let's be fair to the two centre backs. They are, you know, battling hard and, and making it difficult for the two strikers. I mean, the fact that both two, both their strikers have been subbed off probably gives a. Uh, a bit more credit than maybe we're giving to Redmond and, and uh, Heathcote about their performance here because they, they sort of saw them off, didn't they? The two that yeah, but they're playing poor. Let's be fair. Like, yes. At the same time, yeah. they just keep hoofing it. Like that ball went out of play. That was poor. Because for a team that's going to go on to create a record um, points total, maybe they sign a few players after this. Mm. Um, yeah, because the window wouldn't shut back in the, but, the day for yeah. a while. Yeah. Oh, yeah. for a, not a good, not a good start for the season. I bet their fans didn't leave. Than the ground on this day, thinking they were going to win. No. Oh. Oh. Ooh. Risky header. It looked like a back pass. Good goal header. Yeah, yeah, I thought it was hard play yeah. as well, but who knows? The <laughs> the same. Considering they both look like they're playing in blue, it is difficult to tell. Um, yeah, but yeah, decent goal for winning. Mark Carter has been the star. Gemma, you know, I was saying even when he's playing up front on his own, he did do his best to win as many headers as he could, and he was quite good at winning that. He, just before the, the chance that we just looked at, he won a header in a really difficult situation, and you know, he did keep he did keep him up. Oh, look at him! He's raging. <laughs> uh, He's like, don't you know who I am, son? Martin <laughs> Jemson. That wasn't a foul, though, was it? A bit harsh. I think he's been picked up for a series of little incidents, I think, there. 
Oh. He's very, Maybe very. So annoying, right? He was watching me call it very um, ex- expression. Expression. Yeah. There's a lot of expression to Nigel Jameson. I quite like that. Um, I would have liked it if he. Yeah. Sumo. Scored a few more. The um, locals, locals are telling us what they think of. To Jemo. Yeah. Born <laughs> Sumo. Are you sure they're not chatting that about Redmond? <laughs> could well be. Could well be. Um, yeah. There we go. In- Another interesting little tip that I picked up, you know, researching this game, is that you know, obviously Mickey Heathcote um, left them to come to us. But it took about three or four weeks, I think it was, looking at it before he left them. They gave him the benefit again because um, I think he played for them for quite a while and obviously must have been really respected there. And coming to the end of his career, they wanted to obviously raise a bit of money for it. Again, you don't tend to get benefit games in, in modern football. No, you, you don't play like see... ten games, ten years, don't you? Normally, you get where you get one these days. Well, ten years is a testimonial, isn't it? That's yeah. kind of what they say. But a benefit game, I think, was it was almost like it's coming to the end of your career, um, and you know we'd like to give you a bit of funds for you as you go into retirement. And so we had a benefit game, and then he came to play for Shrewsbury. So <laughs> not, sure, not sure what to make of that, but um, yeah, I, you know. I can't I think of the last He's time a interesting player. Mickey Heathcote he was obviously yeah. rated because then we signed him at the 55k when he first came to us and then we sold him for 150k to Cambridge yeah we did yeah it's a lot of money in those days it was yeah it was and you don't, it's funny because you don't really buy players um, that often do you at the lower levels these days obviously we signed a couple of players here and there but mm. it's quite rare really almost free transfers aren't they? Yeah, um, at least back in the day, you always announced how much you paid for players. Though, yeah, you, know, you did. Still, whereas it's, uh, with undisclosed fees now, we don't know how much we're paying for players. You know, it's a foul ever. So, yeah, it like it. but <clears throat> we could well have played for more players over the last ten years, and we just don't know about it anymore. So, um, I, I did like the old transfer numbers and you know being able to think about what you're paying a football manager and what we actually paid for a player. Yeah. It was almost kind of part of that game, kind of growing up and, and sort of understanding how football worked really. But yeah, another terrible long ball there, by the way. Just yeah. straight out of play, almost into the into the construction yard. Um, they haven't tried he, to pass the ball at all. When was the last time you saw a central midfielder pass to a winger? I'd lo- I'd love to know whether this was what they did all season. Whether they just were bullies and went direct and and were quite you know attritional and, and that was their style of football. Or Starrick had them playing nice, neat, tidy football. It'd be interesting to know. Um, Jim, <laughs> trying to get someone booked there. I think the way he went down. Yeah. <laughs> <They're probably laughs> any of it. <laughs> yeah, referees not having any of it. We've obviously got a couple of subs left yet as well, so um, yeah, there is a bit more. Yeah, we've got a couple of subs coming on very shortly, actually. There we go, one one player's running enough taking his coat off. Yeah, I think so. Well, we've only got eight minutes left now, so I think the crowd is, you, know, you can again, you can hear it, can't you? The tension that's there and, and, and seeing whether they'll get out of trouble, but um, yeah, they've, they've kind of managed this pretty well, Tang, in the last 10 minutes. Yeah. Andy Tretton's warming up. Oh, here we go, big Andy. Someone that's still at the club now, which is great. I like the fact that Trenton sort of works with the club for all these years and was, was a player for us as well. It is nice to have those sort of players can kind of go into a, a part of the game that they might not have expected when they were younger and still sort of have a connection with the football club. It's great, I think. Yeah, I know, it's good. It's probably helps him in his role as well to have played for the club as well. Yeah, because there's a few there's a few coaches in the in our I forget the bloody name thing, but I think we've got a couple of coaches in the youth uh, department and the, the community team that are doing bits and pieces. I can't remember what it is now. It's like players that played in the mid two thousands and sort of kind of kept in touch with the club. And when the right opportunity came along, they've kind of gone into the, the coaching and, and the sort of educational stuff that we did. The white of Decent good ball. Oh, I had it over um... Poor Matt, <laughs> Matt Cartwright on the on the on the uh, on the crossbar hanging around. Gemma's having words here we go Ratcliffe's telling him what to do he's giving him some instructions it looked like he was saying something to do with the tactics but they don't look like they're changing wasn't so. short of an opinion <laughs> uh, it was almost like he was checking whether it was okay with Gemma I'm going to do this Gemma is that alright you know you're the main man around here but um, yeah interesting it, obviously Ratcliffe this was his first full season in charge of he's had the end of the last season here we go um, here's Andy Trent's coming on big Tretts Oh, Pete Where's was... he going to go? So if Wilding's coming off, is Tretton going to play? Oh no, he's going to go into the back three. Back five. I think that's what uh, Ratcliffe was just showing. He was sort of, sort of, I think he was showing five on his hand. He was sort of saying, he don't think he wanted a high five. He was saying, that's see, what we're going to. Just, yeah, let's see where yeah. he goes. Poor, <laughs> Wilding lumbered oh, no. off there. Is he playing left wing again? He is. Tretton. Is a, yeah. People say Pep Guardiola was, um, was controversial and <laughs> trying new things. And we here we're playing central oh. things at left wing. General, almost. Yeah. I, how many times does Danny Tretton play left wing? There's a question. Is he still there. playing? Let's see where he's playing. Uh, I imagine he's got a top team somewhere. Yeah, he's Look at that. Backing. We've yeah, got a flat back. Yes, we hit the red JCB then, Ollie. With two JCBs in this game. 
brilliant. Oh dear. That's probably a testament to how poor their shooting's been, to be yeah. honest with you. They hit both those JCBs. And the point, he only had one shot on target in the second hour. It does make you wonder why they park the bloody things right around the goal. Like, <laughs> I'm not really sure that would be the best place to leave them, really. It might be a, put, them off, put them off a bit. But, um, yeah, I, I'd like to know. We'll have to ask Andy Tretton what, what, he, what his instruction was when he came on. I'm sure he'll answer. He's quite. Do you know he's, he's quite, drifting? He's, he's like a natural number 10 playmaker. He's I think. Playing, yeah, he's playing, he's playing left wing. It's very narrow, but he's playing in midfield. Yeah, we really were down to the bare bones. I remember mean, that there was midfield as an Aston. Uh, yeah, I liked there. Aston. Did you like no, got good memories of Aston? We're going to have to cover a game where Sam Aston plays on these yeah. sort of retro ones at some point before the shutdown finishes because um, yeah, everyone loved Aston. We've seen Austin Berkeley, who was one of my players, like a bit like an earlier Aston, but I need to see a Sam Aston game. That's it's got to happen. I need to see a Mickey Brown game as well. We need to get one yeah. of those up as well. Oh, I'd be Exeter for what, great escape. Possibly, I don't know whether they got the footage of that, but we'll, we'll have to ask Wits if he's got that in his magic library. But um, yeah, I know they've got the they've got a few old games. I think we've got the, the Wimbledon um, FA Cup game where we won one 0 I think Mickey Brown was here at that point in time, and that's yeah. that's going back to 1990. I quite like to watch that if it's of, of any quality. But um, yeah, we'll see. We've got loads of cool cool games that we found in their library to go through, haven't we, from this year? Yeah, so, no, so good sure. well, There's one game that we're going to show in a few weeks' time. Ooh, here we go. That double two foot tackle. <laughs> It's Josh it. Walker. It was Walker. Well, yeah, he wasn't. He wasn't afraid to put it in, was he? It's not the, it's not it the normal approach you get from Man United Academy player. Was it Walker or it could have been Jagielka? Very difficult to tell. Um, but yeah, there's another game from this era where we lost that I think we're going to show where Town went four 0 down at Berry, um, uh, and then a load of people left at half time. We're four 0 down at half time, and then uh, Jameson scored a hat trick second half, so we went to four three. And we had a really yeah, good, good chance. Save again for He's been really good, Mark Barry. Yeah. So that's one we've got from this area to look at. 88, 87 minutes in the, into the game, who's your man of the match? Yes, as, as Mark Elliott and Dunny do, who's been your man of the match? Well, I don't think it's it's very difficult to say that my man of the match has been Mark Cartwright, Ollie. Um, I think probably a, a good eight. Oh, <laughs> the ref hit the linesman there. A good eight out of ten for Mark Cartwright in this game, I think. I'd give him an eight or maybe even match. nine. If, yeah. yeah. Yeah, none of the match for me. We'll see if he finishes off with any more sort of key saves. You've got to think they're going to get one more big chance. We're on 87 now, aren't we? So, um, yeah, normally there's one big sort of last hurrah, isn't there? Um, but yeah, it doesn't want to pass, does it? No. There we go. They've not played much football the whole game, have they? They probably no. wanted to hoof it forward and they came forward, 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 forward too far. Um, but yeah, we're doubling up on them. When they get out of the wing, doubling up on them now. Tracks is working hard. Number six, was he? Decent cross or good turns. Yeah, yeah I'm going to give the defence some decent credit here. Like they've not yeah, played they've well, won for them, a lot but of balls. they've won a lot of headers and they've been very attritional and they've been sort of hard working and, and winning the balls they needed to head and, 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 and you know, intercepting where they need to. They've not made any. That's another good ball. Oh, oof. they've not made any huge errors other than a couple of no. missed headers from. from um, from uh, Redmond. Someone was down with cramp then on our team, stretching it out. I think it might have been Tretton. <laughs> That's a bit of a worry. It might have been not Tretton, but yeah, someone was suffering from cramp then. It was, it was Jenkins, I think, or, or Rio. Yeah, those early season games. Yeah, back in the day, they'd been running up and down Hormon Hill, wouldn't they, Ollie? It was their pre season training, and, uh, and probably getting absolutely blown out by that. But, um, yeah, it used to stand town players in good stead that. I don't, I don't think they do it too much anymore. I can't think of no. the, the recent years where we've sent them up Hill. But it used to be a, a rite of passage early in the season, in pre-season. So I say bring it back, Ollie. Can't do him any harm. <laughs> Apart from all the mud and kind of you over and twisting your ankle. But, uh, oh, dear. Oh, here we go. Oh, good. Tretton's Tretton. Tretton. Solid Tretton. Solid. Look at him. He looks nervous, Tretton. It's like he doesn't want to come on and let us lose this. Some of these balls have been, like... They look like they're the right ball, but then Cartwright was really yeah, good at coming out. Hard yeah. to get a header on goal from that. Like, Absolutely, yeah. With Josh Walker, just take that. Get in the corner, lad. 89 minutes. Oh, he's going it's there, quite, isn't he? got quite a bit of pace, isn't he? Yeah. Oh, he's been yeah, push, uh, pushing the back. Yeah. He's a bit soft. Yeah. Daft thing to do, though. He was doing the right thing going for the corner, there. Got to go and see the game right now. Gemmo's even coming deep now, pointing. Captain Gemmo, eh? He's Captain Gemmo, yeah. Yeah, I can't remember whether he was captain the season before or whether Ratcliffe made him captain this season. But um, yeah, this was his, this was his time to shine, wasn't it, as the skipper? But um, yeah, it's all it's all hands to the pump now, Ollie. I think that Mark Atkins is the first man forward at the moment, and he's like just outside the box. See, so double up on the winger again. It was a definite tactic. That's what Tretton's been brought on to do, isn't it? 
sit deep and just do that role. Just keep hoofing it in the box. Yeah. The quality's been awful. After that free was, I say he's still playing, I think, unless he went off. I'm not too sure. But you no, can't he didn't let him take you from there, uh, <laughs> yeah. That's diabolical. <laughs> Oh, no. 20 yards. That's the 90. Start whistling, Ollie. Start whistling. That's the 90. How much extra time you reckon we're going to have? No, it has, like, hasn't been that many injuries, has it? There's obviously been on goal. Actually, with what happened with the clock in the first half, it could be another 10 minutes. Another crap cross, cross from that winger. Yeah. yeah, he's been really poor. Hands on heads from their number 11. He knows they've missed it. He knows they've missed their chance today. Well, controversial from Shrewsbury. They stopped at 90. Yeah. Oh, we won't know. Gemmo clapping that, that bit of defending there. Nice. Funny. I haven't seen Ractive out in the technical area many times with pan, 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 uh, sort of Too much hard work. Yeah, too hot, it probably was too hot. A lot of people wearing shorts and t-shirts, I think, in the crowd today. It was warm that day. Nice summery day, start to the season. Yeah. So where do we finish Glenn in this season then? I don't know, did you look it up, Ollie? No, that's what I was asking you. <laughs> oh, I didn't look. I, I, we'll have a look in a minute. Um, but yeah, I think we started the season really well. We were in shout at the playoffs and then we just faded away quite badly towards the end of the season. That's my memory of what happened. Quite where we finished, I don't know. But um, yeah, that's the, the general vibe of the season. Um, I think the legs went out of us as the season went on. I think from watching this, you can kind of see why, can't you? <laughs> yeah, I just don't have good memories of, of a lot of these players and these teams. Oh, Gemmo, he's in. Oh, keeper. Did not even try to attempt to challenge for that, Jemson. <laughs> it's like 90 minutes. There's absolutely no need. Um, Come again, Andy. He was tall. He was a leggy one, Andy Trenton. I didn't really. I don't, he's one of those players that played a lot of games for us. I don't really remember too much about it. I remember, I remember some of the games we had against Hereford when we played for them, and we kind of, kind of had him as a sort of um, one of those players that we kind of spotted. But he was just kind of all right, wasn't he? In whatever he was asked to do, he did well in the in the central defensive position when he played there. I think that was Trenton's normal sort of position, mm -hmm. wasn't it? That was his his favourite anyway. So, truly finished the season. We finished we ninth. Um, oh. One point off out of the playoffs. Um, yeah, but I'm, I'm sure that we were at a better chance of getting in there. Maybe I got that completely wrong. I'm sure there was a season under, under Brack before we faded away. Um, must be this one. That's not bad, is it? Yeah, must, it must be. This be. One. Yeah. yeah, Halifax got relegated to the conference. Mm. Other teams in the league that season. So you've got Luton, you've got Rochdale, obviously. You've got, um, Russian and Diamond, one of those non-league clubs that came up. Yes. Um, and then some teams that obviously play, now play at high levels. So you've got Hull City down there as well. Bournemouth, were they in the division now or not? Uh, no, but Bournemouth were not <sighs> How risky uh, was that by <laughs> Jenkins End, controlling it in the box with like a minute of injury time to go and it's just letting them move it away? It's risky. Some old names as well, like York City. I always like York on the away day. It's yeah, it's a good away trip to York, but yeah, not anymore. Not and Wrexham got relegated that season, so the season after this we had to get to play them in the, in the game. Yes. And they, Bournemouth got relegated as well, and Bury. So um, yeah, quite a few teams that we played a lot. Yeah, I remember Bournemouth. Bournemouth one of the teams we've played the most over the years, if, if yeah, I can remember. Yeah. Um, especially in this era. That's got to be it, hasn't it, Ref? The board's still not gone up and we've reached 90, so it's definitely something not right with this clock, Ollie. Do you not think? Not really seconds. <laughs> no. Really not sure what's going on, but um, yeah, unless we miss the board this time, but, um, we'll have to see. There's a lot Isn't of balls. <laughs> There's a lot of multi balls. <laughs> it's three balls on the pitch now. Oh dear, it's all Gary Peters' multi ball days, isn't it? Just kicking them around. That guy's like standing there thinking, can you just get lost? We've got a load of work to do here. I need to crack on. <laughs> so, um, playoff final um, was at Millennium oh. Stadium. Ollie, um, board just went up. Five minutes injury time. Five minutes, that's diabolical. Where's, where's that come from? So, I was just saying, playoff final um, was Cheltenham um, beat uh, Boston yes. Diamonds 3 1 in the final. And it was at the um, Millennium Stadium. I went to that game. I Did went you? to that playoff final. Yeah, so my mate was a. Well, you you should have remembered then, shouldn't you? Yeah, I should have known. Well, it's hard to remember what, era, what specific season it was. But my mate, who was um, who was with us at this game, actually, as far as I can remember, he came with me to this game. We used to like go to each other's games when they were down in the London area. Um, if uh, when I was working down in London that season, but so I went to quite a lot of Cheltenham games over the over the course of my university years. Um, but yeah, they got to the playoff final. I remember that now. Yeah, and, and it was Duff. Ooh. Yeah, it's a a no, okay. A lot of Carry pressure now. A lot of pressure. Nope. Look. Is it a corner? Oof. Nothing's come down that. They haven't used that flank all game, have they? No. Second half, they've put nothing down the left flank. Well, the quality flank. across him has been so poor that you, you do think, you know, <laughs> you can see, sort of see why they avoid it a little bit. But uh, they must have thrown everybody up here. I can't see the keeper, unfortunately. That's disappointing. That is an awful corner. Oh, we headed it to Oh, 
Red ball. Oh. Oof. It's a, a looping effort with about three minutes of injury time left. We're going to have to have a word with a clock manufacturer at Shoesby Town. That's <laughs> one thing for sure. We'll have, to, we'll have to get that sorted because I think it's gone double time. But, um, it's a good chance. Yeah. England chance. Yeah. I'll turn the volume off while I lose it on the news. What are they chanting? Oh, there was, a, no, it was, a, it was an England style um, Sheffield Wednesday band ah. going off. And then just putting the five bell fans are chanting, You only sing when you're winning. <laughs> uh, well, doesn't everybody? <laughs> Let's be honest about it. Um, but winning we were. And, and this was a, you know, I say considering how this game got. You see what I meant about Gemma there? I mean, he got fouled, he's give a foul away again. But he, he always t- tended to win his headers, to be fair. It was alright at that. Um, but yeah, considering how this game's gone, like, it was amazing to win it, to be fair, wasn't it? It's an absolute... A plucky three points. <laughs> it's an absolute day like robbery. It is <laughs> But that's why I like it so much. It's just one of those ones where it's like, no one expected this. The way the game went, it just didn't look like it happened, and then suddenly we, we won 1-0 and, you know, defended manfully. It's still coming, though. Ooh. <laughs> that was an awful yeah, tackle, yeah, that. <laughs> Could take that. Skills. Have got one. More lumps in the box. Straight into red mark. He's one more oh, headers in the last 25 minutes. That was too yeah, far. he's done much better in the last 25. Get out, Gemma. Put that in the right place to waste a bit of time there, didn't he? Fans sharing some feedback with the management there. <laughs> <laughs> Little did they know that he was going to be the Messiah. Yeah, when they watch this. Goodness me. Carl hasn't down. been booked yet. He needs to slow down. No, he's taking way too long, isn't he? Sorry, he's getting, getting on with it too quickly. He didn't really hang about there, did he? No. Bizarre. Dean Anderson have had that for a good three minutes. So Dean, he's making himself... Oh. It must have been horrible to play against Jensen. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Just wily old character. He's not fast though, is he? Back is not move. <laughs> <laughs> That's really embarrassing. Oh, no. Oh, my God. Talk about That's, the footwork. Um, that, that would be embarrassing on a Sunday. Let I don't know. Professional football match. I broke my ankle doing something like that. <laughs> <laughs> Another poor yeah. ball. Hold on, down. That was poor, I generally that was. Riox clapping. He knows we've done it. He thinks we're there. I do knows how much the five's left now. Maybe a minute, I reckon, still. He's done it. Oh, that'll do. Get out of play. If you're going to kick it in there, that's the best place to put it. Put it in the, put it in the empty stand. Well, there, is, there is still ball boys in there on the side of the pitch. Oh, far from? Something's happened. Sub? Sub? Yeah. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Shrewsbury Town. <laughs> is that how Leon Drysdale? Yeah. It is. He played loads of games the next season, Leon Drysdale. He played quite a lot this season as well, to be fair. Um, but yeah, he just sort of disappeared off the face of the earth, Leon Drysdale. I don't know he's getting felt up by the chicken pups. Is it Gemmo? Looks like it. Yeah. He's big clap. He's absolutely... Look at him! He absolutely loved... <laughs> See that? <laughs> he gave it to the Plymouth fans and they gave him a load of grief back. That one guy's giving him the... The, the piece of feedback. Oh, brilliant. I love watching these things back like that. Oh, there we go. Don't, I didn't... You know, there was, was no rule about... Was that a again? Yeah, there's no, no chance of... Um, that was a foul throw. <laughs> this away re- with it. Referee's very lax in this game. Yeah. But there's no added extra... Oh, good header again for, from for Redmar. Oh, he wins a foul. Well done. Yeah, that'll do. No one get the ball. Leave it there. Oh dear. Box office, Jackson. That was. I enjoyed that. <laughs> you kept going. That's got to be it now. Slow it down. 30 seconds with free kick. And I think we would have done it. What a result. We're off and running in 2000 and 2001, Ollie. We're on our way. <laughs> We're on our way to Wembley. Oh, well, the Millennium Stadium. I quite like the idea of us playing at the Millennium Stadium for that final of the season. Oof. That's good. Um, I'm not sure where Drysdale's come on. It looks like Drysdale came on and played up front here, yeah, which is it unbelievable. Yeah, it, it's like I said, <laughs> and he was um, paying anyone anywhere. Yeah, it's mad, isn't full it? confidence in his, in, his, um, in, his, uh, in his players to perform. I bet Tretton was, was gutted he didn't come on That's as a third player. sub. He, he might have got to play up front. He could have played up front, yeah. Old Trent, don't get caught on it. Look at this. There we go, full time, lads. Three Boom! Points. Love Boom. it. Trent gets the ball into there. feedback again for the ref. <laughs> they look pretty devastated by that all hands on knees oh, you'd love to see it Ratcliffe who's Ratcliffe fist yeah, pumping and fist Jensen pumping. I don't know maybe it's us yeah I think they were saying well done in, in 19 years time you'll sit and watch the highlights of this <laughs> and so that's it Ollie 